A muted Jesus Christ. Uh, sloppy start, but we're right on time. Right on time. I got back probably about 15 minutes ago uh, from an appointment. I have my stupid work sweater on right here. I don't even know if this is a baseball color. It kind of looks Orioles-ish. I am so disgusted with myself. I see we've got fucking Johnny and Avery. Uh, oh, that's cute. Johnny and Ave. Johnny and Ave. That's adorable. I'm going to bring him up in a second. Steak, you're in here nice and early. Are you ready to roll? Um, we do have Greg potentially coming. Greg is on single dad duty this week. Uh, watching his little one, his wife had to go back to work. And, uh, let me tell you what I, what I know from Greg is this, it's not off to the, to a hot start. Um, but I think that there is a, I would say a 40% chance we see Greg probably a 10% chance we get him for more than half an hour. Um, Oh, one second. He replied to a text, but he didn't do anything. Okay, this is uh, – somebody asked me today, fuck Greg, W's Cornfield. Good morning, everybody. We're in here nice and early, 1030, uh, with respect to uh, Gate 14. So without uh, further ado, let's bring him up, uh, Peter Appel. I keep saying Appel, it's Apple. Uh, what's up, gentlemen? Um, oh, you know, look at that. Johnny's fired the fuck up. <laughs> are, you in a, uh, are, are you in a mansion right now? Like, what is that backdrop? It looks like he's in a fucking penthouse. Suite. I think he looks like he's at an art gallery. Yeah, you see, uh, Steak's been in my apartment plenty of times. It's time. not a mansion, I can assure you. <laughs> it is. It is a one-bedroom, 600-square-foot apartment here in Brooklyn. Uh, this is actually a metal shelf, shelf that held the gambling hats from the office that I had last year. Uh, that is a teapot. This is a piece of art that my wife probably got on sale for like $40 and this is actually a really nice light fixture. And then this is a mirror that we bought, but we want to get rid of, but, but it's really hard to transport. So that's a tour. That's my cribs tour. That's my apartment. hundred square feet. Are, how, can you, can you even put that into like, I don't terms? even know how I would put that. What do you, what do you live in? Uh, I live in a basement. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, so I respect that man living in, living in Brooklyn. You love to see it. Is Brooklyn sketchy? I've never been. I've never been to Brooklyn. I've been to so, the- so well, Steak's already saying shaking his no. Brooklyn <laughs> is big. Brooklyn's big. So Manhattan is skinny. It's it's not very wide. You can walk from the east side to the west side in, I don't know, an hour, but it's really long. Brooklyn is massive. So when you say is it sketchy, there are parts of it that are very sketchy. Um, the part that I live in is yuppie and as fuck and very, very hipster. Like if you want to go out to find Doritos or Lucky Charms or ranch dressing, good luck. Cause you ain't going to find that shit anywhere. Oh, so there's uh, like thrift shops everywhere and shit where you live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, right across the street. It's like fucking vintage clothing stores. Yeah. Steaks. Uh, but it, don't get me wrong. Like it's, it's, it's a nice neighborhood. I can't, I can only complain so much, but Brooklyn is very cool. It's a fun place to live. Uh, steak is in Orlando, by the way, Florida. That's where we met. I used to live we, in. We in see him on the floor of every magic yeah, game. Well, he's a, he's a, he's a, <laughs> he's a player on the team. If, for his, if, his, if his feet are not touching hardwood, he's, he's not going to the nope. game. That, that's what's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steaks, Mr. Orlando. So, uh, I gotta give him his credit, but he, he's actually a surprisingly a New York guy. I feel like you guys are anti New York. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, no, I hate, I Toronto. hate New York. Exactly. No. I mean, New York's similar to Toronto. I mean, it's Toronto's way cleaner. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I'm just saying, like, it's similar where it's like everyone's compacted in like small condos that no one has a car there. It's everyone just kind of it's kind of hectic. Right? I thought you were talking about Yankees fans. Yeah, I hate oh, New York. Yeah. Oh, I hate. Oh New York. no, I meant like the city. Never yeah. been. Never been. Yeah. I've been. Well, you guys got to come. Uh, Steak and I, we we did our first like baseball tour for content last year uh, with with Greg as well, and it was fun that we timed it up with you guys. We met in Cincinnati. That was fun. That was our first time <laughs> in Cincinnati. I think Steak, did you like Cincinnati? Uh yeah, I really did. <laughs> I, I, I kind of think Ohio might be a touch underrated. I know how insane that sounds, but oh, even Cleveland and Cincinnati, not that bad. We even done on that hill. We, we went to Bowling Green and Ohio University for Mac games this year, and we got. You saw you saw what we guys like we do when we go out. We did that back to back nights in Times Ohio. 100. It wow. was awesome. Yeah, I, Ohio's underrated. We get after it, man. That's our problem. We uh, <laughs> we really get after it when we're at these places. But uh, let's get to the board. I mean, listen, I'm excited to do this because you're a Rays fan, and I you're probably the first Rays fan I've ever met. Is that fair to say? I've I, never met a Rays fan before. I have one other Rays fan who lives in New York. Okay, 
So yeah, mm. it's, it might be in, maybe we'll, you should start a New York Tampa Bay Rays bar. Get that going. A little business idea for you there, DJ. Well, I'll tell you what. I've gone to Yankees games with my Rays gear on, and they never used to say a word to me. Uh, I don't know if that's going to change now that they're starting to miss the playoffs, and you know the Rays are establishing their dominance of at least being more relevant than the Yankees are. So we'll see if anything changes. I see that smirk, motherfucker. Um, yeah, I to be to be fully transparent though, I was really late with baseball. It was the only sport I didn't play. Um, and, uh, I didn't really care for it. And then I have a buddy, uh, who's a diehard Rays fan. And I don't know, like for some reason I just started he didn't shut the fuck up about him, like Rocco Baldelli, whatever, you know? So I'm like, fine, I'll watch a couple games kind of grew on me. Then I started watching baseball. I always hate the juggernauts. I hate the, 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 the Goliaths. I always root for David. So I just hated the Yankees before I liked any team. And then, um, and then the Rays, kind of how their franchise, uh, their their model, I really appreciate, you know. So they do they do more with less. And so I've started really diving into being a Rays fan. I don't know, Stig, what would you say? Like, right before I moved to New York, maybe like when the Evan Longoria years, you and I would go to games. We our manager was an Orioles fan. We would drive down, pay ten dollars for tickets, and you know the trap sucks, but we had a good good time rooting for. So we're I'm still really lean into it. I've we both love baseball. I don't know that Stig really has a team. You don't really have a team, right? Yeah, no, I know. I don't have Maybe a team. That- I, I was actually one of those kids because my dad's from uh, Massapequa, New York, that used to be a Yankees fan. And then when I grew up a little bit, I'm like, God, I can't be a Yankees fan in Florida. Like, there's nothing cool about that. Uh, so I started ironically rooting for the Rays. Um, I just, you know, I, I, lo- I actually love baseball, but I haven't gotten really into a team. Tampa's the only place I go for games. It is a so- dump, but not the worst place to watch games. Yeah, it, it is a dump. But we're, I will say this. I don't hate the Blue Jays. Like, I hate the Yankees. I hate the Red Sox. Uh, uh, yeah, the Red Sox. The Orioles, I'm starting to really fucking despise. But I've made it pretty clear. Like, yeah. I also, I respect them. I just hate that they're in the AL East. But, man, I don't know what it is. I have a soft spot for the Blue Jays. I've been to Toronto once. Like the city. Very diverse. Great food. Um, I, I, I enjoyed it. I went to the NHL um, uh, Hall, of Hall of Fame. It was a yeah. very, very good time. But I'd love to go to a Jays game. Uh, Steak, we might have to put that on the radar or something. If the Rays are in town, that'd be fun. So you guys, though, just so people are familiar, it's still early. We'll get some more people trickling in here. You guys are diehard Blues fan, Blue Jays fans, obviously. You're Toronto natives. Um, but you started a podcast called Gate 14. I'm assuming Gate 14 is a gate at the game that you go to that you probably went to religiously. Yeah, and- Johnny, Johnny as a kid. That's where he Yeah, that's where it. I used to go when I was a kid. Okay, so you started a podcast, and it's just all things Blue Jays. Yeah, it's it's all things Blue Jays, and I mean, what what we noticed is is uh, when we were when I I mean when I was getting into the podcast game, I realized there was no like degenerate like just common man Blue Jays fans that people can relate to. So I reached out to Avery to start Gate Fourteen, and we've obviously got a pretty decent amount of traction. It's doing well, and uh, I think it's because people relate to it because we're just two fucking idiots that cover the Toronto Blue Jays that are common fans that aren't just suit and tie. Talking about Toronto Blue Jays, talk about just like funny shit. Like, for example, we call Brandon Belt last year, we call him the cock because there's a picture of him at second base celebrating a double and his dick is just out in his pants. So, like, we just do stupid shit like that that people relate to. So, that's we kind of, we've yeah. kind of found that avenue. It's like hanging out with your buddies. Yeah. You're not, yeah. not getting talked down to. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what we do. We're me, uh, Steak, and Greg are fucking idiots and we love sports betting. So, we kind of do that, just not really honed in on one specific thing. But I got to tell you, I think that you've this niche market for, um, uh, dot like leaning into one team is really something I've seen grow, uh, in the last couple of years. On mostly, tw- I'm, I'm usually only on Twitter, but social media. I mean, like, I'm a Bucks fan too, obviously, Tampa. These guys, I've been on Twitter for 10 plus years. These guys who started as like, small fan accounts are now massive and taking pictures with the general manager. Um, these other guys that we follow for the Orlando magic, they, they started a podcast. They're called like the six man podcast. Steak, I've sent you their stuff before they're doing watch parties. Now they're getting fucking interviews. Paulo Boncaro is going on their show. Jesus Christ. So, so it's really, I got to tell you guys, I think you, there is this wave that's, that's forming and people are riding. And I, I, you probably didn't do that intentionally, but, you know, not knowing that maybe it would get this big, obviously you hope that it did, but I'm seeing it for all the teams that I follow. I'm now seeing it like uh, kind of transpire into something that's that could pe- potentially be really big. So I think it's great. It seems like you have a stranglehold on the Blue Jays fan base. 
which is fucking awesome. Uh, we're fans. Yeah. I came. I think I came across your Twitter from Johnny, and I just thought I like Johnny because he was a fucking idiot. Yeah. Um, so, or we're we're attracted to to idiots. So that's that's great to have you guys on. But I want to talk about the AL East while I got you because we do have people coming up uh, today. So we do want to talk baseball as much as we could probably hang out in a bar for hours and shoot the shit. Oh yeah. And let's start with the Blue Jays. My uh, stake, I haven't even talked to you about the Blue Jays. Last year, you faded them because they were trendy. I went back to them because I said the Blue Jays were really trendy two years ago, and they just let everybody down. Um, I got fucked because I went for the jugular with the division. Obviously, that didn't hit. But for whatever reason, I kept betting their team total over. I kept betting Vladdy Jr. to hit a fucking home run. I loved George Springer because I was terrified of George Springer on the Astros. Everything about them scared me. Um, but Every time I bet the Blue Jays, I would I would lose money more than I would win money. I don't Same. know what to do with the team this year, but from a baseball fan's perspective, going into it, it seems like for the first time in a while, their pitching is their strength. With what you yeah. saw from Barrios and Kikuchi last year, now you got Gosman, who's a you know a candidate for Cy Young, and maybe they took a step back with their their hitting. Um, so I don't know. I'm curious. What are your expectations? Are you realistic? Are you, I know you're probably incredibly biased, but <laughs> what are your expectations for the Blue Jays this year? I, and and if you're betting them, how would you bet them? I would. Uh, so uh, I think we I think we're pretty fair in uh, terms of the Blue Jays stuff. I think this pitching, like you mentioned, is the best it's been probably in a very long time. I mean, Kevin Gossman, Cy Young finalist, Toronto Blue Jays led the American League in Team ERA last year. So that. The, the pitching is going to be there, and so is the defense. They won a team gold glove. Shout out to them for doing that. Uh, but it's the hitting stuff, man. At the end of the day, you obviously saw it with Vladdy, uh, a guy who put up a one war last year and supposed to be a generational hitter. Uh, obviously, was not good. But I think we're banking on a lot of bounce backs for this team to be good, and they've looked really good in spring training. I think they uh, led the spring, or if not second in the spring, in team home runs, which is something they struggled with last year. Uh, a team that – is supposed to be really good offensively. You look at that lineup top to bottom, they should be good. I mean, you've got Springer, Bichette, Guerrero. Justin Turner's been really good. So uh, I think banking on the bounce backs is better than picking up a guy at spring, at, at like in the offseason because you got to ride with the dogs that you've rode since 2021. So I'm really, po I'm really positive with this team. Everyone's doubting them. They've been hot. Like I know Stake, Stake you mentioned Stake was uh, – fading the public kind of with them last year because they were the, the public favorite but mm -hmm. now everyone's kind of overlooking them mm -hmm. and i think this is when they're going to be the best to be honest with you i think their win total is like what 86 and a half which is crazy low but um i think this is when you buy stock on the team is when everyone's looking down on them yeah perfect post hype sleeper thing to do is is on the blue jays this year. i wouldn't bet them to win the division because the division's so good mm -hmm. it was a historical run for the al east last season where they were going to have the most wins in baseball and every team should be good again besides the Red Sox. But the Red Sox have pieces there besides a bad rotation. Uh, they didn't make the big splash of free agency. So all the fans hate the offseason. They think it was the worst offseason of all time. It's like we have no superstar okay. players. It's like <clears throat> We have four of them at least. So yeah. just yeah. betting on bounce backs is not as fun as a fan. But the front office knew what they were doing. So I, th I think they're in a good spot. The AL East is going to be great again. But... I'm really happy for some Yankees injuries to happen early, uh, <laughs> make things happen. Uh, the Rays seem to be retooling for not this year, the next year maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an interesting spot for them to be in. So uh, I do want to talk about the Yankees with you guys, but I, I want to stay on the Blue Jays for a little bit. I like hearing what you're saying. Um, I think that there's always those teams that when they, they perform better when they have zero expectations. And I feel like the Blue Jays could be that team. I'm a New York Rangers fan. And everybody was so fucking high on the Rangers the last two years. Like, oh, especially when they traded for Patrick Kane and Tarasenko. This offseason, nobody talked about them. And they were the first team to clinch a playoff spot. So um, I'm, I'm getting vibes of in every sport of teams like that. I could see the Blue Jays doing it. Um, also, I don't know if you saw the screenshot I posted of last year of why I bet on the Rays. They didn't really do much to their lineup that underperformed two years ago, the previous year. So I was like, well, clearly they see potential in this lineup. I'm going to trust them. Now, granted, the Blue Jays front office isn't as smart as the Rays front office, but I am, I'm going to be that guy that goes back to backing the Blue Jays. I have Vladimir Guerrero over our most home runs. That's kind of just a fun bet, but I want to attack some player props stake. Um, it's our newsletter is going to be out tomorrow. I think you're going to be on Bichette this yeah. season. What, do you, what are you going to do with the Blue Jays? I took Bo Bichette most hits in the league. I think it was 11 oh, yeah. to one. Um, I, I don't know what you guys think about this or if you're going to hate it, but Vladdy really pissed me off last year and <laughs> I'm cool with backing the blue Jays again, but I, 
I'm not sure I'm cool with backing Vladdy again until I see a little bit out of him because yeah. I'm just not 100% sure, man. I thought, I'm like, oh, this guy's going to be one of the best hit- hitters in baseball. Like, this is his leap year. He's going to go insane. And, I mean, yeah, he, he was just a letdown. Obviously, I understand betting him to hit, hit a home run game, home run every game is stupid. <laughs> we did it anyways. <laughs> uh, but I like Bo Bichette. I think I'm more comfortable backing him over Vladdy personally. So yeah. he was the he led the AL and hit two straight seasons. And he so. should have last year, but he was injured for a month. Exactly. Yeah. So I he's good at getting hits. He he slimmed <laughs> down he slimmed down again. So last year I thought he was bulking up to hit for more power, and then he just went out and hit 310 or whatever he did. So he just knows what type of hitter he is at this point. I, yeah. I don't think it's a bad I think he's sacrificing in the way that he lost a pretty decent amount of weight in the offseason, kind of uh is more lean now compared to last year. He's stealing more bases. We, we saw that in spring training. He was running all over the base pass, and uh, he is he's such a good hitter. It's like it's kind of impossible to not take his hits or back him leading the league in hits because he's done it his entire career. I mean, back to back seasons leading the league in hits is bananas. Last year, I think he he yeah he missed a month. He would have led the league in hits again last year. Would have been third time in a row. This year, I think he stays healthy, and I think that's a really good bet to be honest. I think he's easily one of the best pure hitters in baseball his ability to hit the ball the other way and uh, the, makes the so vladdy good. thing i did a big video the deep dive into him he went Bo Bichette mode which is why he sucks he made contact all over the zone i think he just if you leave the bottom third of the zone out for vladdy he can hit all his damage is done at the top of the zone so i think he knows that the whole team-wide philosophy last season was make as much contact as possible and they were the worst hitting team i've ever seen in my life so yeah, i think they terrible. scrapped that Fuck it, let's hit pull side homers again, and I'm I'm excited for it. Pull side homers again, uh, real quick. W sub bangs, uh, owners, you. owners box. Sandy, appreciate you. Um, okay, so last thing about the Blue Jays, I want to talk Yankees. Say if you have anything else, feel free. I wanted to talk about the pitching, so I wanted to back uh, not not Manoa uh, and and not <laughs> uh, and not Gosman. Um, but either Kikuchi or Barrios. When we went and watched them uh, in in Cincinnati. Um, we watched two games. I think the first game was a walk off fucking snooze fest. One nothing. Days. One nothing. Yeah. yeah one nothing. Incredible. <laughs> right. Home yeah. run. We're, going, we're going to see one of the, you know, should be on paper. One of the best lineups with the blue Jays and one of the most fun fucking teams of the league flavors of the month in the red and the reds. And the first game we see is a one Oh, uh, walk off. Unbelievable. You can't friendly park in baseball too. Yeah. yeah. Right. You can't make it up. Although you guys went to Detroit and watched him get no hit. That was, pretty yeah, we did do that. that was bad. But and I'm not trying to bring that up, but I will say this: that one of the biggest takeaways I had from watching them was Barrios had some nasty stuff. Oh, he's and it wasn't fluky. I think he was good throughout the majority of the season. So I wanted to bet on him in some way, shape, or form. I'm not going to go crazy and bet him to win the Cy Young. But do you think taking? I, I'm going to pull it up, but if I can find it, do you think taking him like maybe over K's or over wins would be a play that you would cosign? I'm I'm leaning wins. So I did. Okay. I've done a video where I think his wins over his wins. It's twelve. Where do you where do you do these videos? Is it on your Twitter, by the way? Uh, A14. Yeah, yeah we did Instagram okay. or Twitter. We did. did one. I thought it was ten and a half. No, it was, no, it was twelve and a half. It was twelve. It's, it was twelve and a half wins for Jose Brios, which is his total. And the good thing about Jose Brios is, knock on wood, he's managed to make every single start the past three years. He's never missed a start. He's very durable, uh, and that's something that you're looking for with with over wins. Uh, and he also goes deep into baseball games. Jose Barrios, obviously, we have a relationship with Chris Bassett. And we talk about uh, the staff on the uh, on the team and all that. And Chris Bassett mm-hmm. said Jose Barrios came into camp looking fucking insane. Because they obviously watch each other's bullpens. Jose Barrios is starting opening day. He's going to probably get the most starts on this team, uh, who I think is going to be a good team. So Jose Barrios wins is where I'd probably lean because he wasn't averaging – uh a strikeout an inning last year so that would be a tough one to take the case yeah i i I think it's it's wins not strikeouts yeah he does the thing where he gives up hosel like not hosel just rockets he'll give up a ton of hard contact Mm -hmm. uh and puts the ball in play like that's where he's really good he'll get the swing and miss on his slurve uh but he's good uh, pitch a contact pitcher as well so i think wins is really good he pitched horribly two years ago and they Mm -hmm. won pretty much all of his starts so oh it, interesting like the yeah. uh okay um it, he had a five era and they won like 15 of his 18 starts it was yeah point. it was insane, it was an insane run he went on he's at 11 insane. wins on bet online 175 and a half strikeouts bassett is at 11 and a half wins um 
So, Bassett okay. led the AL in wins last year, I believe. Yeah. Wow. He does. Okay. Reeve Tree says Barrios is ratchet. Steak, do you have anything else on the Blue Jays or you want to move to the Yankees? No the Just he's talking about. That second game we went to, we had the over. I don't know if you remember this. They scored like seven runs in the first three innings and it still went under. Yeah. Our guy, uh, our yeah. guy, Davis Schneider. We got we, locked out of Bet MGM because yeah, we, we didn't have our passport. So we were. We were on the field for BP, and David Schneider came up to us, and we were just talking to him, and he said he was starting that game. So we're like, all right, we, we bet on, we were gonna bet on him to hit a home run and the Jays to win, which was like plus five hundred. We go to Bet MGM, and they wouldn't let us in because we never passports. So we so <laughs> they, they stole money from us. Essentially. And he hit, and he hit a home and run. He hit a home run. He was the guy that hit the home run to give them the lead. And, and like, the oh, and the Reds yeah. had second and third with one out in the ninth inning too. Also, the day we flew home, I think was the third and final game of that series. I'm pretty sure there was like 18 runs in that game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we drove home that day, too. Home. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I tweeted. We were fucking taken off from the airport. I'm like, I think we just got hit from a by a ball out of, uh, out of the park. <laughs> the, uh, also, the last funny story of that game, we were sitting down, and and then we decided to get up, and Ellie De La Cruz hit a uh, – up in the park home uh inside yeah. the park home run do you remember that stake we're like all right action kind of settled down after all those runs let's go let's go take a tour of the stadium and then everybody ah! like what the fuck's going on <laughs> um okay let's talk yankees um first and foremost have you been to a yankees game never i have i went to the old yankee stadium i went to yankees red sox in like 2008 it was like ching ming wong versus uh uh who was the asian pitcher on the Daisuke. Daisuke. Matsuzaka. It was Matsuzaka versus uh, Chingming Wong. That was that stadium rocks. Yeah. That old, the old Yankee Stadium. What a barn that is. That is incredible. So the new one is not my favorite. City Field, I think, blows it out of the water. Stakes been to you've been to Yankees, the new Yankee Stadium, right? Both, yeah, yeah. City Field, Fox. Um, I can't. I, I was thinking about going to a Mets uh, opening day, but the weather still blows here. I'm probably going to go Saturday, watch and play the Brewers. But um, I don't really enjoy going to Yankees games that much. Um, but I, I think it would be, uh, this year seems like a year that I'm probably going to go to more than I ever have. Um, just because I do think I have a, I have a bad feeling that they might be pretty good, obviously with some of the acquisitions they made too. stake, unfortunately, uh, said in our group chat, uh, and he agrees with Greg that it might be their year. They're due for a little bit of a run. Um, do you deep down inside have that sick feeling as well? Or do you think, that uh that they're gonna suck so i immediately the soto move made me think it's like okay they're gonna do the thing that we hate them and they're gonna win the world series but every time one of their old guys gets injured and gets banged up i start to feel a little bit better of them kind of being bad as well the bottom half of the lineup is just bad no it's, it's terrible they're i mean at, at the end of the day they're relying on a pitching staff with Luis Gill as their five guy, I mean Garrett Cole won't be playing for two, won't be pitching for two months, which is going to set them back a pretty decent amount. Having their, uh, having other teams' big dogs have to face Nestor Cortez, who I who I think is terrible. I don't think Nestor Cortez is good. Uh, That's really funny because I like him, but go ahead. He had a really bad spring, and I think Nestor Cortez is on a pretty bad decline. Uh, we'll see what happens opening day, uh, obviously, but I do think they're relying on a lot of their pitching staff to be good and these young guns, but. The bottom of that lineup is bad, and there and Aaron Judge, who's very injury prone, playing center field blows my fucking mind. Like that's not where you put an injury prone guy. You kind of leave him in right field, kind of hide him there in right field. I think Aaron, Aaron Judge's body is gonna, uh, what's it called? Break. Um, break. Yeah, essentially break. <laughs> but it, it, well, they're one Aaron Judge in, in injury away from being bad. They have no depth. They're gonna have to play Trent Grisham in center field to replace him if he if, for the games that he misses. So. It, it, they're relying on a lot of bounce backs, way more than the Jays. And DJ LeMay, who's hurt as well, I saw today. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's not good because I think he's good. Steak, does any of that concern you as a Yankees investor? Not necessarily. It's obviously concerning, but I already knew what I was getting into. I knew, A, I'm gambling. Well, first of all, I don't. I wouldn't say Nestor Cortez is terrible, but I think we can all agree he shouldn't be any team's ace. Right. Yeah. Uh, so him being the opening day starter, obviously concerning. So if you're betting on the Yankees, you're definitely betting on two things. One, you're betting on them staying very competitive until Garrett Cole gets back. Mm -hmm. And two, you're gambling on Aaron Judge's health, like you said. I think if he's healthy, he's probably in for top three MVP season. Um, but I, you're you're definitely gambling. Um, that's not something I hate either. Um, I like Giancarlo, but he can't stay healthy either. So aside from Judge, Stanton can't stay fucking healthy. But if he can play 100-plus games – that's kind of that's a that's a really scary lineup. I, I also am going to say a very a something I should never say in a DGen stream. But what I was really looking for is a way to fade the Orioles um, because I'm addicted mm -hmm. to fading the Orioles and I can't get there 
with the Blue Jays winning the division. I could get there with the Blue Jays getting a wild card, but for some reason I can't get there with them winning the AL East. So I came up with the Yankee it being the Yankees year, but they're kind of like the Dallas Cowboys and it's always their year when it never is. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I have a few units on them. We saw, we saw what judge can do when he is. Oh, healthy. he's the best hitter he, in baseball when he's, he's healthy. the best hitter Easily. in the world. And he carried them two seasons ago so the that they gave him juiced balls that he got to play with while everyone else was playing with regular <laughs> baseball. But, yeah, the, the Yankees team is interesting. I mean, Marcus Stroman as the three guy. I, I'm surprised Marcus Stroman's not starting opening day. I think he's the best pitcher on that team, not named yeah. Gary Cole. It's very weird. He's their three guy. Uh, but other than that, though, I, this team is either going to be really, really good like they were two years ago and go on like this kind of run that they had to start the season last year, or they're just going to be very, very bad and waste one. So, and, and some of the moves they haven't made is what really surprised me because you're clearly all in, you traded the farm for Juan Soto besides Spencer Jones, you didn't trade him, but they went all in for Juan Soto and they're not signing pitching, which is what they needed. They didn't sign Blake Snell. Uh, they didn't sign Montgomery who kind of went for kind of nothing. To the yeah. They didn't sign him. Uh, they're kind they're relying on these young guys like Lewis Gill, who can't throw a strike to save his life. And Clark Schmidt, who's kind of a bullpen guy. So, it's a very weird front office move to go all in early with Juan Soto, but not really go all in and pick up these pitching staff pitchers like the Yankees have been doing forever. Pretty good point. Um, and on that note, while we have a few minutes left, uh, I would like to get your thoughts on the Orioles because we might as well round out the AL East. We can we can spare the Ray stock. We're going to have plenty of that. Uh, and the Red Sox are kind of mad, in my opinion. But the Orioles, I think we can all unite and say they are they are our enemy. Uh, the terror. They're, they're a problem. They're a really big fucking problem. And I guess I'm, I'm with stake. Like I, I can't do it. You know, two years ago I was fading the Orioles left and right because you know, they kept, they kept getting these lines. Like to me, they looked so good and they would beat these teams and then they would play. And I would think they should be, you know, a minus 140 favorite and the lines of pick them or something weird, you know? And I'd be like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fade them. And they, I learned my lesson, and then last year I, I didn't fade them. I probably saved myself about 20 units. They were like the most profitable team in baseball. Um, are you in this season outlook? I'm, I, I see Grayson Rodriguez is a trendy pick, uh, as like a sleeper for Cy Young. Um, somebody commented on my tweet today that he was like 30 to one at one point, I think he's down to like 14 to one. Um, and then they got Corbin Burns. So, do you think that we can see regression from the Orioles this season? Would you fade them? Or are you just terrified and accepting that they are they're they're going to be a problem for years to come? Well, I'm, I'm accepting. I'm it. accepting. Oh, I will God. say this on their offensive front: they had a, the uh, the exact same offensive season as the Toronto Blue Jays last year, and they won 100 games. Like they were the exact same offensive team. Uh, Avery's preying on Jackson Holiday's downfall, which is makes sense because I we all should. Why? All, why wait, why is that? Because I, he's, he's going to be the best. Yeah, he's going to be the best hitter in the world, and I don't want to see him. Is he really? He, he's so good. The power might be the only problem, but he's polished for a guy coming out of high school. He's insane. He's fucking insane. He's an Epo baby. That's what they do. But this lineup is so good, uh, and they have tons of prospects coming up. They have a catching prospect. What's his name, Avery? That young Sam Basalo. Sam Basalo, who is a freak, is coming up for uh, them. Catching, well. but isn't Rutschman a catcher? Yeah, it, it, he it, plays it, him first. But there, but there's yeah, they'll probably move Rutschman to first, and then have this kid catcher the opposite. But uh, this team is going to be. I think this team's going to be good again. I, I don't know 100 wins. But uh, I do think this team's going to be good. And then the Corbin Burns edition, who, by the way, Corbin Burns had a very bad spring. I think he had a 7-4 ERA in the spring. Maybe Let me stop you right there. I hear you referring to spring a lot, which I'm okay with. I don't pay attention to spring training at all. I think it's incredible that you guys do. But how much weight do you, or, you know, stock do you put into how teams perform in the spring training and how that kind of correlates into the start, at least, of the regular season? Like, do, well, do you – The Angels, seen Angels were the best team in the spring last, last year. year. Yeah. So Who, that, who, who uh, was – the angels. angels oh <laughs> okay so that's immediately should tell you no but then is the dodgers and the orioles were the best teams in the spring this season i take it into individual players yes what they do I, none of what the team yeah do. i don't care about the team stuff i mean the writing was on the wall last year for alec manoa which is why i have ptsd from spring training and which is why i focus so much on it he was very bad in spring walking a lot of guys giving up a lot of hard contact and then you saw we saw what he did in the season he was terrible last year and you say kikuchi last year really was really really good in the spring that's why i think he was good in the season because he showed glimpses in the spring i think he led spring training and strikeouts last year he was really good and then was obviously piggybacked that into the season so i majority of the time focus on 
individual players in the spring compared to just team stuff. And Corbin Burns gave up a lot of hard contact in the spring. Our guy, Ernie Clement, launched the ball off him in the spring. So um, <laughs> it's kind of just – I don't – I take it with a grain of salt, obviously, but I am preying on Corbin Burns' downfall as well. So I'm playing, I like that. I, yeah. I like the look on player performances more so than teams. That makes sense. Um, and, then, and then final, on that note, actually, are there any particular players – based on how they've done in spring that you've had your eyes on that you want to bet on this season? Varsho. Varsho is a good one. What would uh, you do with Varsho? Hits? I'd, I'd probably do home runs. I don't know what his total would be at, but so he has a little bit of a new swing. So they, they showed a side-by-side on Sportsnet of it. Last year he was closed. This year he opened up his stance and, have his, and has his hands higher, and he's pulling the ball more in the air, which is what his problem was last year, wasn't pulling the ball in the air. And he's hitting for a a lot more power, obviously small sample size in the spring. But he looks way better. He's walking. He's stealing bases. I think Varsho is going to be a massive guy. And that's one of the best defensive outfielders in baseball last year. Had the highest DRS in all of baseball. So uh, 20 and a half home runs is Varsho's line. That's that's, He was bad last year and he hit 20. Yeah, he was one of the worst hitters in the team last year and he hit 20. So that's a number that I would probably be very comfortable putting a pretty decent amount on for Dalton Varsho. Awesome. Dudes, thank you so much. Uh, so Gate 14, last thing real quick, uh, the podcast. During baseball season, when is it coming out? Uh, Sunday night and uh, Thursday morning. Well, whenever whenever the series, the series are done. Yeah. So as as Oh, I got it. Through. Okay, so yeah, you do yeah. a recap of the series. And then you're going to be doing a stream, is it every day? Uh, usually we live stream the games because people like our reactions and we'll clip it and do stupid shit about us. So uh, we live stream almost every single game. Uh, with the people and we'll just like we do degenerate shit like we bet on it and uh, sweat it out with the community so uh, those have been pretty good and uh, yeah it's it's fun I'm so fired up to have baseball back man I can't I can't can't keep pretending I know college basketball anymore yeah it's (laughs) tough it's tough I am too I love the grind of baseball I'm very excited Uh, thank you for making the time and coming on Uh, love the shit you guys do good luck this season and uh, down with the Orioles easy boys all right take it easy Good shit. Uh, we've got a uh, we got a pack lobby here. Let's bring Greg up and give a little intro. Greg, you know who Gino from Bet Openly is? Yeah. You kind of look like him right now. I like it. I, I take that as a compliment. You kind of yeah. You kind of uh, kind of uh, California West Coast. All right. We don't have much time to spare. I don't know that I've ever had four screens up here before. We have Javon ready to rock and roll. Um, oh, we nice. just Javon's we nice. just did uh, AL East talk with uh, Blue Jays, obviously with the Blue Jays guys. Um, some Yankees shitting, and then some Orioles conversation. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, with Javon, I want to talk Rays. Uh, let's just get it out of the way, Gre- Greg. Uh, but, yeah, hold on, hold on. We have 30 minutes, so let's not try to tail off too much into you and I bickering about them. And I also want us to pitch some of our plays, see what he thinks, and then get some of his best bets. Javon, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Much appreciated. Um, of course, what's up? How are you feeling after a uh, weekend in Vegas for March Madness? Have you uh, have you shaken it off? Yeah, I've shaken it off. It was cool because like we were there and kind of just sitting in the the theater at the Fontainebleau, or Fontainebleau, however you say it. But Fontainebleau, setup, yeah. <laughs> so setup was cool. So like we weren't doing all that much until after. So yeah, I'm a little banged up, but not too much. Nice. Uh, well, you did a uh, baseball space yesterday. I uh, I tuned in for about thirty minutes of it. Um, and actually what I want to start with before we talk Rays is a, uh, I don't know that you were talking so much about the Mets, but you were talking about Pete Alonzo. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about the Mets because I believe we, uh, Snake and Greg are all kind of aligned in wanting to invest on the Mets this year. Um, I think I haven't pressed any buttons yet. I don't know if you guys have, but I believe with the Mets team total over wins 80 and a half, I tweeted a while ago when I was just doing some casual baseball research i saw that pete alonzo was in a uh in a contract year and he's just kind of a guy that i'm willing to square up with uh because how he's taking the home run derby seriously and everything like that and so i put it to twitter i asked you know what's the best way to invest with uh pete alonzo and i think you or maybe pete said rbis so i have him plus 850 most rbis uh but i'm just curious in general and if you don't have too many thoughts on the team that's fine but how do you feel about the Mets this year? Because I like a team that kind of, in a way, has no expectations on them. Um, also, I'm a little bit scared. I talked to Hazen about this yesterday. They are potential sellers at the deadline if shit's not going well early. So that is probably the biggest red flag. But would you agree or disagree with backing the Mets this season? I agree with backing their lineup. Because like the up and down like their lineup is, I think, a little better than people give it credit for partially because some guys have been hurt and obviously they've been selling a little bit at the deadline the last couple of years too, but 
if they have like a healthy Nemo, Lindor, Pete Alonso, they just got JD Martinez, which is probably going to be hitting uh, behind Pete Alonso too. And then you got Francisco Alvarez, who I think you may be a little familiar with, who's coming mm-hmm. on and going to be hitting like that lineup is better than a lot of people give it credit for. So like, I think they're at the very least going to score. I definitely have some questions about their rotation because Kodai Senga is starting the season off pretty injured. And I, I don't know if he's really going to be back this season at all. And Ooh. after that, it gets kind of dark. So like, it's a tricky situation investing in them as a team, but I think you're in the right spot. Like Pete Alonso, I think is going to have a massive year. I think that team is going to score. They'll definitely be like a in season over target for me. Okay. I like that. Uh, State Greg, any other uh, players on the Mets that you were thinking about targeting? Not really. Stake, you want to go first? I, I'm. I wasn't. I'm. I was thinking about yeah. targeting the Mets as a team. Obviously, the pitching concerns me, but I do think the lineup's underrated. Uh, and I like Pete Alonso. I, I sprinkled him NL MVP. I sprinkled him most home runs. And after hearing what you said about RBIs, I might as well sprinkle that too. Yeah. Uh, especially because so. if, if the lineup is going to be better, I mean, I'm a Nimmo guy. I know off the field, he might be a piece of shit. I don't really get too involved with it, but, um, just going to Mets games, like he's always kind of a dog Alvarez, like you mentioned, I don't know that really benefits Alonzo in terms of getting a, a, a base runner in, but if you like their lineup to improve and you like their best hitter, I do think that that kind of all correlates into taking Pete to have some RBIs. So, um, all right, I'm good on that. Who uh, so tell me about the Rays this year? Uh, you, I feel like I'm not as high on them as I was last year. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to be putting any money on them, um, but I do know I read a, a Veasan guy is going to who faded them last year, who Greg got a little caught up in in that article. Yeah, he faded him last year. He's, He's going to be betting on too, him. I believe. That is me. Yep, I believe Pete said when we'll hear from him at 11:30. He's going to be betting on him. I'm not as optimistic on the Rays' outlook this year. Uh, I think that uh, I think the injuries, early injuries, are already concerning me a bit. Uh, but I do have a, a wager punched in. That's Randy AL MVP. It's definitely being a full on, full fledged fanboy. But I do think this is going to be a Yandy and Randy. So uh, I'm not going to say it, but I think we're going to see them do phenomenal, especially with a lot of young guys in there. Also, I was looking at Junior Caminero, uh, rookie of the year at nine to one. Go ahead, Greg, give your finger up. No, I, so I was going to say before you got into the race thing, I'm, I'm waving the white flag on on being a raise hater. Um, wow. So I want to I want to get a raise guy to back with you guys, and that was one of the ones I had circled was him at uh, oh. rookie of the year. Okay, and I wanted to bet on Josh Lau over home runs, but he's hurt to start the year, so I think I'm going to stay away. So uh, Javon, as a fellow Rays fan uh, and someone who knows much more about baseball than I do, are you high, low, or neutral on the Rays this year? I'm pretty high on the Rays this year. Oh, and it's- okay. It's more relative to expectations. Like, I don't think they're going to be better than last year, but like coming into this year, I don't think anybody thinks they're going to be that good. It's kind of the repeat of the same song and dance that we do every single season. They lose a bunch of guys, Glass now, main name, and people think, how the hell are they going to replace that? Especially now that they have a full rotation pretty much on the IL to start the season. And uh, I, I guess like Rasmussen, maybe the only one Springs do, I guess you could say, that has any chance of coming back this season. So, yeah, I, I definitely have my questions about like the depth of the pitching staff. There's a couple more injuries. I would be a little concerned, but Eflin is going to do Eflin things. I think he's going to have the same type of year that he had last year. Really, really good. I'm a huge, huge, huge Aaron Savali guy this year. Yeah. I think he's going to be like I, I talked about this a little bit. There's like the one pitcher that makes a massive step for the Rays every year and just pops up out of nowhere with crazy numbers. I think it's Savali this year after a whole off season people think they overpaid a little bit in that trade and like usually that that turns out pretty well for the race and if they're doing that investing that much in them trading away a massive asset they've wanted to hang on to for a while they see something so i, I think he's gonna be really good pepio too great piece in the trade it's like i think the pitching staff is a, a little better than people want to give it credit for just because there's guys that they don't know as usual type in there but the lineup too i kind of like what they did with that there's a lot of it's a different approach for them this year. Like they got a couple contact and speed guys. Like they have, I love Caballero. I love Caminero too in the middle infield there, but you know who uh, my guy in the lineup is this year that I'm super excited to see. Ahmed Rosario. Yes, but love him. it's kind of, it's kind of weird for them. Cause it's, I mean, I guess same thing for Caminero. It's kind of a log jam at shortstop. So Fair. it's, it's uh, a little weird. Brandon Lau. Like, 
Uh, definitely not Brandon Lott. He's <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm done with that guy, dude. But uh, Richie Palacios is my guy. Oh, I did I not think, expect you to say that. I don't know yeah, who that is. That's my guy. Came over in the Kittredge trade from St. Louis, and he's going to be, especially like with the Josh Lowe injury. Now he's going to be getting more consistent abs at least to start the season. So like he's a a contact guy that they've said is showing you know flashes of power. We saw it in spring training a little bit. So. I think he's another one of the guys who's just going to pop up out of nowhere and people are going to say, how the hell do the Rays keep doing this shit early in the season? Love that. Um, I like getting Savale last year. It was unfortunate because I, I think like uh, two of the his first starts were against teams in the previous division, so they had a lot of familiarity with him, so there wasn't like a great start. But he is uh, he's a guy that I'm okay targeting. He's not a strikeout guy from what I understand. He's a contact guy. Savale? Uh, he can, yeah, he's not a big strikeout guy. Isn't he a ground like a ground ball guy? He's a, he's a pretty decent strikeout guy. Well, it's like okay. when they, oh, at least when he came over from the Ray or from the, the guards, like last year, there was a pretty big tick, like when he initially came to the Rays in, in strikeouts, which is it kind of leveled itself off to like end the season because he got a little inconsistent. But I'm buying in on that being the new Savali level now. Love that. Um, so I guess if you're, if, if you're going to take Palacios, uh, which I love because I don't know that we're going to hear another person say that guy's name. Uh, I respect that. But could you give me a guy with a bigger household name on the Rays, like a Paredes or Harold Maria Ramirez or Yandy or something? Is there anybody else in that lineup that you would target uh, like for a, for a season long prop? Yeah. For a season long, uh, the only guy I would go out is Randy. Okay. First. So you're all in on the Randy train. Cause I'm, I'm all in on the Randy train. The, the reason why, I mean, I, I, Love the Rays, but if we're talking Yandy and Paredes, they both had career years. So, like, it's kind of hard to back them to return to that level that we saw last season. Like, Yandy, to to kind of expect no regression, I think is kind of naive of me to do as a Rays fan. And then yeah. Paredes, same deal, especially since he's very one-dimensional, does not hit the ball to the opposite side of the field. And I guess if we're talking Harold, too, I don't think he's on this team in two months. So, mm. it's, it's kind of hard to get involved with any of those guys. But Randy... I think that's the the one constant I can buy in on. Okay. Um, Steak, what are your thoughts on the Rays this year, and are you going to be betting on them? <clears throat> I'm not. Unfortunately, I like them the least I have going into a season, I'd say, in the last few years. And Get him, DJ. Get him. I don't know if I'm being a hater. I just don't see a path. Like, my baseball brain doesn't see a path. If the Orioles are going to be dominant and the Yankees are going to be very good and the Blue Jays are going to be much better and – Obviously, I want to hit that Randy uh, MVP ticket with you, but I actually think that's like the only way. Um, Javon kind of said it. Isaac had a career year. Yandy had a career year. And I, I know expectations are low, but haven't the Rays kind of become the team where it's like, oh, they don't have the pieces, but they're going to figure it out and win 90 yes. games. I almost think that's like the new norm for the Rays is everyone is expecting that. Like, oh, I don't know anybody who pitches for the Rays, but they're going to win 90 games. Um, and I just really don't see it happening this year. I got to be honest. It's funny you said that. So, so I guess it would make sense. I think that the Rays are favored to not make the playoffs. They're minus 130. No, to make the playoffs, but you just said it. And I know you didn't just take this from the Vison article. Cause I don't think you read it, but the guy, Adam Burke, who does the previews over there that faded the Rays. That is literally what he said to a T he said, shame on me for fading the Rays. I thought there were all these baseball reasons to do it. You know what? Their their pitchers, their pitching staff is depleted. There's no McClanahan. There's no this. They traded glass now. Yeah. And he said, but you know what? I don't know how they're going to do it. They're just going to do it. I'm not fading the Rays this year. Um, somebody did DM me. Not, not that I really give that much of a fuck, but somebody DM'd me and uh, and and showed me that the Rays to make the playoffs are is boosted, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. Greg, you uh, I, okay? So I respect you waving the white flag. I think you're doing it because we have guys like Javon and Pete coming up who are respecting the Rays. So I just at least you're not being stubborn and are are taking a step back and not hating on the Rays. I respect that. But are you going to do what this Vison guy is doing and now get involved with them and bet on them? No, like I said, I would I'd like to get a guy. And as much as I want to get uh, that Camarino guy at the Rookie of the Year. Javon kind of he had a mention Savale, but I actually wanted to ask Javon how we would target Peapot. Um Pepiot. Pepiot, whatever. Peapot. Pe Peapot, <laughs> Pepiot, whatever. Baseball guy. Cultured. How you would target him because he is a guy that that like you said, the Rays have a way of finding these guys and just turning somebody who's I don't want to say mediocre, but like a tier above mediocre into superstars. They just seem to do it frequently. And he's the guy that I think they actually do this year. Cause there's not much about him. 
Um, so how would I how would I target him? I don't know if there's a way to target Pepio. That's that's kind of the thing. Really? Yeah, I mean, like if you had a Not strikeout young? a strikeout line for the season, like that's probably all it would take. My one like concern about Pepio is he's never had like a significant log of innings like in any season of his career. It's like the Rays are frankly probably going to need him to do that, and I, mm-hmm. I obviously don't want to see the guy get injured, but the way that the Rays are going to use him kind of screams that he's going to burn out towards the end of the season, which, I mean, I think he's going to be fantastic when he does pitch, but mm. I, I'm a little worried about seeing him for 162. Got it. So maybe pivot to Savale. Yeah, Savale's definitely my guy this year. And you like okay. Eflin to, to just continue to be the horse. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Eflin, definitely the horse of the rotation and the guy that's going to give him the most consistency. So, like, I think that's what the rotation is built on at this point. So, like, he's awesome. going to do – you can do what he did last year, but Eflin or Savali, big step up. Uh, my buddy, who's a Rays fan, uh, said this season our bullpen is so good that if we have a lead going into the sixth inning, we should not lose a game. Um, and I, 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 yeah, you have an interesting look on your face. And then Hazen pointed out that we got this Matan guy from uh, the Astros, who apparently is pretty elite. So I think Fairbanks and most of the bullpen's pretty healthy. So that's a reason for optimism. I think this is definitely probably the worst bullpen they've had in a couple of years. Well, what? Why would why would he be so confident in their bullpen going into this year? I mean, it's just good every year. I mean, they they kind of figure it out with these guys, but in terms of like the actual bullpen that they've put together, I think out of like the last couple of years, it's definitely the worst. Interesting. Uh, do you not like the uh, the setup guys? I mean, other than I guess like I, I like Matone, I like Fairbanks. Jason Adam, if he comes back healthy, that would be great. But like other than that, like they have, they don't have fantastic pieces. Like they have Davinsky, who sucks, and maybe they figure out something with him. But he was bad for a majority of the year. It started to get better towards the end. Like Garrett Clevenger is super inconsistent. It's like they they don't have the same level of guys the past All couple right. years. Well, I'm gonna have to press push back on him uh, with that. So I'm happy to hear you say it. All right, I want to talk to you about the Reds. Um, one, more you thing, were... one more thing on the race, and this is just cute. This is fun, but I, I saw this was actually going to be how I waved the white flag. But FanDuel has, I think this will be awesome for opening day, but you can bet first player on a team to hit a home run. Um, so Randy's on there, plus 420. He's the leader. But Javon, your guy, Richie Palacios, is 32 to 1. So I might just sprinkle <laughs> oh a little God. bit on that. Just for, I'd be, I think that'd be a fun bet to have on opening day for a couple that of guys. That would be hilarious i mean he's not he's not a home run guy i'll tell you that oh okay so that's why I'm clearly, so yeah clearly, get me all hyped up. One. but for the for the rays though like i, I saw those bets because i was actually looking at those for the reds and uh there it's never the obvious guy for the race it's always somebody random so like, i'm going hey, back to the shot. well with jose siri i'll be back him in some way shape or form give me siri season again to repeat um all right so we we all love the Reds. Quick call real quick I'm gonna okay go ahead off. you were you were the reds whisperer last uh last year i give you credit for that you uh you put your your nuts on the table or meat on table as they say uh but the reds make the, the playoffs um, came pretty fucking close. I think it got to, I don't know if they ever got to a minus price, but we went and saw them. They put up a big dud for us, unfortunately, but started to love the team. Um, and I, I am, am now seeing, not, not saying it, it's trendy or anything, but I'm not seeing as much Reds love going into this year as I expected. Um, steak, I think you might be fading the Reds this year on their under win total. I don't know if you are, you considered it, or maybe it was Greg. Um, but I am curious what your thoughts are on the Reds going into this year. Are you going to double down on them? Or do you think they have some regression, Javon? So I bet on them again this year. I'm taking the, took their over, took their over win total. Um, definitely took that prior to like their whole team is hurt now coming into the season, which Ooh. is kind of not great. But I'm, I'm holding strong. Definitely going to look at reinvesting. I guess today because I got to do that today. But yeah, it's it's a scary situation. But I, I love a lot of the guys. Like if you're talking about, I think you were a pretty big Spencer Steer fan. Get right. Oh. Like I love. I love Matt McLean, who's now hurt, probably going to be out for all of the season, if not most of it. I think oh. Ellie's, yeah, Ellie's going to take a pretty big step up. Christian Encarnacion Strand is going to take a pretty big step up, but Spencer Steer is is definitely the guy that I'm I'm looking at to have a massive year, and I think the pitching staff is going to be fun too. Like the difference with the Reds a little bit this season. I don't know how tapped in you were to their little run, but it was abysmal watching their bullpen come in towards the end mm-hmm. of games. They blew mm-hmm. it. Every single time they were gassed towards the end of the year, a lot of innings. It's honestly the strength of their team at this point coming into this season. They made a lot of ads. Like, I love that, but 
it's, it's definitely tough dealing with all the injuries coming into the season. Well, that is unfortunate. Steak, are you getting to the uh, press the button? No, no, that might have been Greg. I'm 100% not fading the Reds. I don't think I'm pressing the button on them. Obviously, like Javon said, a lot of injuries. I'm curious, and I I want to know if this is just me. Is the narrative about Ellie kind of interesting? Because I remember, like, when he first came up, it was like, wow, this guy's like the hot, the best thing to ever happen to baseball for like a month. And then I feel like the narrative sort of switched on him towards like the end of the season that he sucks. Not not necessarily that he sucks, you know, that he's overrated and not ready for uh, what was expected of him. And I'm trying to figure that out. Do you do either you guys feel that way? I felt that way. And I felt that way yesterday on stream when I had Hazen on and we talked about Ellie. There were so many people that agreed uh, when when Hazen was kind of talking about betting against him. I don't know that he said he was going to. So I don't want to uh, misquote him or anything. But it was interesting to me uh, that in, I'm not saying he turned into a villain. But I think people were like, oh, the, he can't keep this up. And then, yes, they wanted to bet on under anything other than stolen bases. Javon, would you agree? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. I think there's uh, I'm a little more tapped into the red side of things. So I guess I see <laughs> I guess I see people a little more optimistic about Ellie. But just in the general general fan sphere, like, yeah, they're they got tired of watching him strike out three times a game towards the end of last year. Um, so I am curious. I want to talk a little bit about player props. Uh, you, you had a great call last year on, uh, Alec Manoa regressing and he, he fucking ended up playing in triple a and I think he got rocked there. So not to steal any of your thunder. I know you've already done a podcast, uh, for BTL with your, uh, with your futures and everything like that. Um, but do you have a Manoa ish read on anybody coming into this season where you expect regression? Yeah, Zach Gallon. Oh, yeah. Well, he's he's not going to be like Manoa level bad, but to put it not to to talk down to you like you don't you're an idiot or anything, but I'm going to put it in simpler Please simpler do. terms, I guess, not the baseball nerdy stuff, but uh basically he got extremely lucky. He was one of the luckiest pitchers in the MLB last season. He had a higher hard hit rate than Alec Manoa and a lot of horrible pitchers and he just got <laughs> very fortunate with some of the results so like coming into this season it's it's literally like the manoa formula because we tried to fade a zach gallon in a lot of spots last year for the same reason it didn't work out till like the end of the season where he got a little gassed and now we're coming into the season and everybody expects him to be the same cy young level candidate when he's had uh far and beyond the highest workload that really any pitcher has had in the last couple of years but him specifically he hasn't sniffed that like his, his entire career it's like 243 innings including the playoffs mm -hmm. I think he's going to be gas this year, and like he's, uh, I'm taking my my goat whales over three four four ERA. So like, it's not in the sense of Manoa where I think he's going to be like absolutely awful, but I think he's definitely going to take a little bit of a step back from last year. And I do say that as a person who actually like really loves the D backs this year too, the team that I think nobody's really talking about coming back from their little Mickey Mouse World Series run. Um, but I don't like him. I think he's going to take a step back, and that's that's my little regression piece. Damn. Uh, Greg, wow. you're, you were bobbing your head. I, I didn't I, know what to do about the Dimebacks last year. All I remember, they were very trendy, and I stayed off of them because of that, but they still ended up hitting because they went on a crazy run to end the year. But, what, Greg, what were you going to say? Yeah, I took I took the D-backs late in the year um, to make the playoffs, and I remember that paying off oh, pretty nice. well. But this year I actually had it kind of circled of fading them. So it, I am glad you kind of talked me off of that. Their, their numbers just seem – it, it honestly reminds me of like the Bengals two years ago where they came off a Super Bowl run and then they were at like, like I think their win totals at like 83 and a half. They're like pretty chalky to miss the play. I, I think they're favored to miss the playoffs. Like there's just a lot of stuff on there that mm. makes me want to fade them. But at the same time, like I just fucking got off a year fading the Rays and it sucks. Do I want to fade the next Rays team coming right. up? You know? Yeah. It's also like eh, part of the reason I think all of their lines look like this. feel like it's kind of baked in for like the uh, World Series hangover. I think Pete said that yesterday. It's also, yeah. like, it's also like they're in the division, probably what they made the fourth most exciting ads. It's like obviously the Dodgers did what they did. Uh, the Padres <laughs> made some big moves. I think people are still optimistic about them, probably myself included. The Giants got Jorge Soler, Blake Snell, Matt Chapman. So like nobody's really on the D-backs this year, which was mm – -hmm. I don't, I don't want to say a little surprising to me, but like they're easily like the not like even in, like the Rockies level in their own division as far wow. as like what people are looking for this season. Nobody really cares about the D-backs. Did you have any thoughts on the D-backs this year? 
No, but I did. I do think it's funny how like the World Series hangover has become such a public thing that it, almost everybody likes to like fade a team after they make a run to the World Series. Where I feel like that didn't used to be a thing. Um, my only thought about the D-backs is that I think I like the Giants more. Um, and obviously I think everybody knows the Dodgers are going to get theirs and probably the Padres get theirs this year. So it's like one or the other for me. I can't back both. And I think I prefer the Giants. Um, but I don't think I'd necessarily sign up for directly fading the Diamondbacks. Yeah, I'm good to I'm good to pass on that too. Um, yeah, them signing Montgomery was like the final nail in the coffin for me to get out of there and not fade them. Javon, I want to ask you about two more uh, teams while we have you for uh, till 11:30. Um, sure. I, you could, on that note, you talk about the Padres. It's funny this morning. Um, I I thought about maybe investing in the Padres. Um, I <laughs> I don't I don't know what it was. I was doing my research. I saw a couple acquisitions they had, and uh, and especially now with Soto leaving. And on Bet Online, I didn't see any of their player props listed or anything for the season totals. And I messaged that guy Dave Mason who runs it, who's very cool. He put CMC MVP up there after I requested him at 150 to one and it fucking almost hit. So I was like, Hey man, where are the San Diego Padres props? And then about 10 minutes later, I realized that their season already started. So uh, I don't, I guess it's probably too late, but you can always bet things in season. Is that a team you said you're optimistic? Is that a team that you are either taking over wins or to make the playoffs, anything like that? Uh, I didn't invest in the Padres, but I'm definitely keeping an eye on them. I think okay. I'm going to be betting them in season. Cause like, it feels like, the weight is lifted off of them a little bit. Agreed. And the whole they tried to start their super team didn't necessarily work out. Now you know a couple big pieces in that are gone. Soto's gone. Snell's gone too. So like the expectations are a, a little bit lower. But I think the pieces that they got back and you know those deals are going to do solid numbers, especially like in you know the deal getting Michael King back, who I think is a bigger deal than people are bringing it out to. So mm-hmm. like uh, I like the Padres. I think they're going to be pretty competitive. I think you'll see them in the playoffs. Okay. Me too. Uh, Steak, would you agree on that? 100%. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other team I wanted to ask you about is uh, the Detroit Tigers. They uh, they seem to be a little, uh, a little, I don't know, I wouldn't say cute or, or trendy or anything, but they have, uh, I think they have like the most love they've had in a long time. Um, and, and this is a team that I think has like made the playoffs within, you know, recent memory, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they, uh, they've got some exciting pieces. I, the, the guy who's getting slurped the most is uh, Scooball, uh, Riley Green, Torkelson. I've watched the Tigers a little bit, and funny enough, like when I watched the Tigers, it was when they played the Rays the past couple of years. Don't ask me why, but that's like when I had three to five units on like fucking McClanahan Masterclass or something that didn't happen. I that. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Um, Scooball is a fun pitcher to watch. I li- like I could I hate watching Rodon pitch, and I know I'm probably in the minority there. I sign me up for any time uh, Scooball is pitching. They have some guys that I am more than happy to back. So I, that's like one of those things for me, whether they're trendy or not trendy. I don't think I care. I want to bet on the Detroit Tigers. Do you uh, approve of that or would you go against it? No, I approve. That's my my favorite win total is the Tigers. And the number one uh, favorite win total of yours is the Detroit Tigers. Favorite is the Tigers. And like I, I would love if they weren't, you know, super court, but they give me very much like D backs vibes from last awesome. year. And I was I was scared of the same thing. So like the, the thing about the Tigers that I, I love about them, like obviously they have a really good bullpen, which keeps them in every single game. They have a lot of young pieces that you're expecting to take big steps like Torque did towards the end of last year. You can hope Riley Green can do the same. They got guys like Colt Keith coming up. That's going to give like a bolst to the lineup. So like they, they have all the pieces around them. Definitely helps too that they play in a, a division that involves a lot of teams who frankly can't hit or if we're talking like the bottom of the division with, you know, the Royals that can't pitch either. So like I think even though you're not playing your division nearly as much as you are in past years, I think they're going to compete. I think that division is really just – a crapshoot of who gets hot at the right time towards the end of the season. And I think they are, they're going to be really good. Uh, steak you in on the, you're bobbing your head like a motherfucker. Well, you know, I like scuba to win the, uh, Cy Young. I don't, I, if it's public, I'm okay with it. Honestly, I'm trying to become a little less contrarian as I think like the landscape of gambling changes to where contrarian is sort of becoming a little public in general. Right. Uh, so if he's public to win the Cy Young, I'm okay with that. Uh, I love Detroit in general. I'm going in April, uh, for oh, the yeah. draft. And they have a home baseball game while I'm there. So I'm excited about that. And mm-hmm. I agree, I guess, when Javon said they're Corp, I guess they are. But are they as Corp as the Royals? Because I'm sort of comparing them to the Royals, two teams that sort of sucked last year but made strides, 
star players that I think you're like expecting better years out of both teams. Am I crazy to think people like the Royals more? Heard a lot of Royals love. Javon, what do you think? Yeah, I've heard a lot of Royals love. I don't think as much as the Tigers, but it's also, I don't know, it's a little clouded because we're in a super pro Royals community. So it's oh. hard to gauge sometimes. <laughs> we're like, I mean, the, the Royals are like our fun team that our whole community bets on. So I, I don't know. It's hard for me to figure out sometimes. Fair I was enough. absolutely one of those people last year. I bet on the Royals more times than I want to admit. Yeah, I remember that. Um, okay, so if you were to, by the way, um, I, I don't know how you feel about the pencil, Spencer Torkelson, but he is up oh. for 29 and a half home runs. Um, do you like him at all as a, as a player yeah. prop to bet on this year? RBIs, home runs, any of those you'd co-sign? Yeah, I mean, I would say home runs probably the, the smartest investment there, and I'll probably have that in a little bit of something too. So I, I love Torque. Awesome. Uh, Javon, man, thank you so much for, uh, for coming on. Appreciate your time and hearing your thoughts as always, uh, BTL today, 1230. Of course. And before, before I hop off really sure. quickly, uh, another quick little nugget team that I feel like you would kind of be in on. I really like the Cardinals this year, dude. I just saw something on Twitter that like they're lying to make the play or win the division has moved significantly. They're the, they're the favorite now. And since the, uh, cause we were doing a, a pod, the BTL pod and, First episode we did it. The Cubs were favored. The Cubs signed Cody Bellinger. Cards were moved to a favorite. It's like that's the team. Wow. We're talking like the one. There's no like super chalky weird favorite this year in the MLB to, mm-hmm. as far as like division winners go because those lose in every sport. But mm-hmm. that's like the glaring line in my opinion that stands out, especially after what happened last year when the Cards were the chalky favorites. So now they're back, and I think they're going to be really good, which scares me as a Reds investor and now fan. But I think they're going to win the division. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Well, I'm glad you ended with that. Uh, Thank you again, man. I appreciate it. I'll tune into BTL at 1230. Yep. Surely. Appreciate it. Awesome, bro. bro. Thank you. Um, All right. God, Steak, are you still good? Time-wise? Great. Awesome. All right. We're going to keep the marathon of baseball bets going with uh, PODP. I got guys at the window harassing me. (laughs) What's up? Oh, boo. Boo. We just brought up a Yankees fan. How funny is that? Yeah. Uh, Yep. I see your stupid hat. Um, uh, Pete, thanks for joining. I don't know that you've been on stream a ton, but I feel like when you have, for some reason, we don't really talk baseball. Um, So I am excited to uh, to hear your thoughts. And uh, also on that note, not to glaze you too much. I think you guys do a great job uh, with baseball content. I I think my steak. I, I came across your stuff before steak did, and uh, we are always a little apprehensive when we when we come across people that are uh, smart and uh, you know we say nerds, but in a friendly way because sometimes they're a little pretentious and they can't stand losing. But you are our favorite, so we were like, "Ooh, I don't know about this Pete guy. We are big Pete fans uh, because you do have some humility and are self deprecating. So we love that. Please don't please don't change." Um, and on that note, I would love to get right into it and talk about that stupid ass team, uh, that, uh, hat you're wearing right now. Um, the Yankees are a team that I despise, but I've come around and I've told you, you I've hated them less. You don't like the Yankees? Shut up. I had no idea. I've hated them less. I've hated them less, but this year, the guy at stake and Greg, who Greg is on a corp call. He'll be back up in a second. Uh, I posted the screenshot of our group chat. Um, they are telling me they think it's the Yankees year and I really, really hope they're wrong. And I am curious as a fan and as a, as a, uh, Oh Jesus Christ, that is disgusting. I did that you for you. Have that? That's I for you, it. Pete. You I have it. that? No, I got, ev- I think I have every team's Jersey. Oh, okay. Well then that makes it, that's, yeah. that's, that's fine. Big jersey um, guy. Where do you stand on the Yankees? And I'm sorry if you've talked about them at nauseum, but I don't know what your thoughts are. And I'm sure our, our following would, would love to hear it. I mean, I've talked about every team at nauseum. I think at this point we've done Fair so enough. much, so much work. Um, but yeah, the Yankees, like, I don't think it's their year personally. Um, I'm on the Astros. I think it's their year. I think the Astros are crowned the World Series champions over the Braves, over the Dodgers, over the Phillies in the National League. I think they're going to win 100 games. I bet they're over 91 and a half wins. It moved up to 92 and a half. I would still bet that as well. I think they're going to go crazy. I also prefer the Orioles. In the AL East to oh, the Yankees, God. and I bet the Rays to win the division in the American League East. So my money is not anywhere near the Yankees, except one bet that you might think is square, mm-hmm. but I saw value in it, and that is Aaron Judge to lead the league in home runs. Okay. Now you you hear yeah. that you hear that, and it's like, oh, duh, Peter, duh. 
Well, after he hit 62, he was about plus 150 to plus 200, depending on the book, the following year. Then he gets hurt, right? And he still hits 39 home runs in just over 100 games. He is, by every metric, you can have your bias, you can say whatever you want. By every metric, he is not only the best power hitter in Major League Baseball, by a decent margin, he's one of the greatest power hitters to ever step on the baseball field. So the fact is that Spencer Strider, who has a similar type ceiling in terms of strikeouts, right? He's about plus 150 to 200 after leading last year. Judge is now in the 400 to 700 range because he got hurt last year. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, I'm getting four to one on a guy. And the only reason not to take it is health. And I think at plus 200, not really worth the price for him to stay healthy. Plus 400. Yeah, I'm going to jump in on that price. So that's only where my units are for the Yankees. I actually, before Cole got injured, I told people to take their under. I didn't take it, but I told people to take their under on wins. So it's a lot of boomer bust with this team. So I have two thoughts. Uh, one, I don't know if you heard, if you were in the lobby when Steak just mentioned, but we've we've been very contrarian bettors for a long time. Um, everything, you, you have to adapt. You have to change. Betting always changes. Uh, I was talking about this with, um, or somebody tweeted, I think it was probably as far as something, but like, there was a, a short like two to three year stint where betting contrarian almost felt easy. Yeah. Um, and then everything changes. And even you can see it throughout the course of a baseball season. You know, I think spring and summer are different than when you get into the fall. But there are times where we will square up. Absolutely. And uh, and lay it with certain things. And I think, Stake, you, you nodded your head. You already bet Aaron Judge. Yeah, home runs and RBIs. And to be honest with you, I would I'm not going to disagree with you about anything when it comes to baseball. But if Aaron Judge leads the league in home runs and RBIs, I feel decent about my wager on over wins. I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fine. I, I'm worried about the pitching staff, right? When Cole goes down, Rodon has not looked good in spring. I'm still unsure about what Marcus Stroman looks like at this age. You have the same concerns with Nestor, right? I'm not saying – it's almost like with the Yankees, I want to take upside lines. I want to take World Series. I want to take division. I'd want to bet on their upside. That's why I'm not on judge over 41 and a half, right? Because I think he hits 55 or he gets hurt and he hits 35. Like yeah. take upside bets with the Yankees because I think this team has enormous boom or bust written all over them. So if you're looking at the Yankees with a glass half full approach, don't take the normal lines. Take every big plus money price you can. And if you want to fade the Yankees, that's when you take the normal lines because I see value on those. But at the same time, I could totally see the vision. And that's why Yankee fans are excited. However, I watched them win 82 games last year. We can't forget that, right? And everything went wrong. I'll and, never forget it. And if Judge gets hurt, stay Greg. We saw what that lineup looked without him. It looked like yeah. a AAA lineup. Yeah, so did. if he goes down and the pitching doesn't come up, the Yankees could be legitimately worse than last year. But I'm obviously really, really excited about Juan Soto. Yeah. But if the Yankees were truly all in, why didn't they give $25 million why didn't they give twenty five million to Jordan Montgomery? Why didn't they give it to Blake Snell? Well, Are I haven't thought about in? Blake Snell to be honest with you. I don't think he's he wanted to come to the East Coast. I think Blake Snell is a West Coast no. guy. I mean, you can say that, but then money talks. Like I, I think, like everybody has their preference, and then someone says we're going to give you fifteen million more than the other team. Maybe you could get a pretty good apartment. Fair enough. Like, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, I won't dispute that with you. Uh, Greg, you just got back from a corp call, and that's perfect timing because I know you keep jumping back and forth. So while you're here, I want Peter to talk a little bit about the Rays. Uh, we did talk about the Rays. What, were you going to say something? Before before you get off the, the Yankees. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, yes, go ahead. That's how I'm looking at targeting them. Um, was just division for 165, and it's more of the – they seem there seems to be a decent delta between the Yankees and everyone else, and granted you have that Yankee tax that always exists, but that's what sort of drew me to it is – they really came off such a bad year. I mean, I've seen several, I've seen more tweets on people betting the Yankees to finish last in the division than I've seen people backing the Yankees this year. I just don't think there's any, after what, what we saw last year. Um, and I mean, I, granted the judge, he could go down again, but it seems like Stanton lost fucking a hundred pounds and they also added Soto. So even if judge does get hurt again, the lineup should be significantly, not significantly better, but a, they have another superstar in the lineup too. Yes, the lineup will definitely be better, especially Glaber in a contract year. I think he's a guy who people should keep an eye on. I think Anthony Volpe is a guy who I think could take that next step. I, I am more excited about the lineup than I have been in, in the past. But at the same time, 
Greg, steak. We've been Yankee fans for a long time. How many <laughs> narratives before the season have we heard with Stanton? Right? It seems like it's like every year he's, he's on this new regimen. He's on this new regimen, and he's so healthy. And then we're in oh, May, no. and he's running four miles an hour, and he can't freaking make contact, and he hits 190. So it's like, I mean, did we like did we forget as Yankee fans? We hear this every year, and it's like, yes. That's why I'm saying if that clicks, if Stanton is that guy, and all the offense comes to play, and Rodon bounces back, and Nestor bounces back, this team could win the World Series. Well, that's, that's, what that's, that's what they're betting. That's a lot betting. of ifs. And then there's other teams who don't have nearly the amount of ifs. And right. the thing is, like, I talked about this on the space yesterday. Like, MLB futures, like, don't worry about what other people are betting. Like, the handle is not nearly the size of the NFL. And you talked about it yourself. Like, you being on the side that's not really the public, like, yeah, there's probably some Yankee bets on the under. There's probably a ton of bets on the over. There's probably bets on either side because people have differing opinions. Like, I don't really worry where other people's money are. Like, if I make the read and I see the value, I'm on it. Um, but with the Yankees, I see value on their upside. But if you're looking at the regular lines, you have to go under because in baseball, the 162, if you don't have a solid starting pitching staff, it's going to be hard to win a lot of games. Go ahead, Steak. Can we hear the Stanton ex-girlfriend analogy? Oh yeah, it's kind of like like that girl. She comes home and she beats you for three straight years, and then she finally comes home and she's like, "I'm not going to beat you anymore." But you might verbally or flinch. physically, both. She might you might still flinch when she gets a hand near you. It's kind of like Stanton. It's like he's keep beating me years over years, and now I heard he's not going to beat me anymore. But when he gets close, I'm still going to flinch. It's not good. I, like, I hope Stan's healthy. I'm a Yankee fan. I hope he hits 50 bombs. Like, he hit 59 in Miami. Probably not, though. Like, pr I've seen this story before. I hope. I'm with you guys. I hope. I'm wearing the hat. We'll see. Greg, uh, Greg's wife beats his ass, so I guess he can relate to that. <laughs> aggressive, no, aggressive no, in, in, in all seriousness, I, I think you bring up some really good points about the Yankees. I'm I'm not going to get there. You know, it's funny. I, I tend to fade the fan. So when like a fan base is really down on a team that like gets me a little bit more fired up, but you come from a, uh, I, I think uh, a point of, it was funny. There was a comment I highlighted from Javon. You see both sides, which is you give me shit about all the time, but you gave a very good uh, pitch on, on both sides. So I, yeah, at like least I have so that. many other, I have so many other bets. I didn't, I don't have any bets on the, so, Yankees so, the yep. So listen, we, we, we got you for another 20 minutes. I would love to hear a little bit more. I had to ask you about the Yankees, but I'd like to hear a little bit more uh, about what you're on. Um, and because we've, the, 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 we had Javon and we had a couple other guys and we've asked them about our bets and our teams. Um, so I don't want to be too super redundant. Um, is there, give me like a team that you're, you're highest on and a team that you're lowest on. We'll start with the lowest. Did you guys sure. hear I have the biggest bet of my life this offseason? Uh, I did, yes. The You're on the Miami Marlins under. Yes. Yeah, so so here's how it started. So my co-host, Arm Layton, is a huge Miami Marlins fan. He grew up in South Florida. He's been following the team. He had podcasts before he started the baseball company following the Marlins. So he has a he has friends in the organization and he was just bitching about how the direction of the organization is going. He was like we're going to stink, we're going to do all this and I was like, "Hmm, let me look into it." So what I found is the Miami Marlins when they won 69 games back in 22 were on the wrong side of one run luck. And one run luck kind of in baseball, right in the NFL, right one score games, possessions, right? You guys might fade that in the NFL. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's the same thing in MLB, right? Those tend to often flip. So the Marlins won 84 games last year, but they had the seventh best record in one run games in the history of major league baseball, tying the 1909 white Sox. And I averaged all of them and saw what they did the next season. Those teams on average lost eight more games the next season. So I was like, hmm. Then I look at their roster and I think to myself, well, they lost Sandy, who gave them 184 innings last year. He was the unanimous Cy Young in 22, right? He's out for the entire season. And there's some teams that do well in one run games because they have an electric bullpen. The Marlins were not that case. I remember I was on Cardinals money line. The Marlins bunted with runners on second and, or first and second, and they overthrew him and the Marlins just scored and won. Like, <laughs> The Marlins do not have a great bullpen, so it makes no sense that they would have one more luck. It was simply luck. 
So then I look at the roster and I'm looking at Yuri Perez as their number two starter, who's a young guy without that many innings. Now he's hurt to start the year. Braxton Garrett, a guy who kind of came out of nowhere. Now, these guys were all healthy when I made this bet. Braxton Garrett has now gone down with a shoulder issue. They do not have the same starting pitching depth. They tri- they remember Jorge Soler's on the Giants now. He was the only guy to hit 30 plus home runs for them last year. So they have lost key pieces. They're also a terrible organization. They got their GM who mm-hmm. finally got them to the playoffs. Guess what they did? They fired her the next year. Their hitting that coach weird. All, weird. All the hitting coach, like the hitting coach, Brent Brown, the Marlins were heads over heels. Like, finally, we got a great hitting coach. Guess where he's at now? Seattle. They fired him too. They are an inept organization who doesn't know what they're doing. And they brought in a new GM where his direction is, I have to see what this team is. There's a reason they were not active at all. They know doom is coming. So I bet under 78 and a half and I hammered the shit out of it. And now it's down to 77 and a half, 76 and a half because of these starting pitching injuries. I made the line 74 and a half. And I think you can now argue it's more closer to 73, 72. I think this team could bottom out. I think this team would be is going to be one of the worst in all of baseball. Pretty good sell job. It's hard to to Yeah, uh, I wrote it down. <laughs> I saw you doing something over there. Uh Stake, any thoughts on the Marlins? I had zero thoughts on the Marlins coming to this yeah, year. Fat girl side kind of uh brought up a good point because obviously I'm a Vikings fan. That perfectly describes the Vikings two years ago, winning yeah. all those one possession games. Well, they won 13 games, very the lucky. Thing, Everyone knew. It's as if the Vikings then fired Kevin O'Connell and traded Justin Jefferson and, okay, and then all that kind of stuff. Yeah, like that's yeah, the comparison okay. where it's like, wait a minute, they got rid of everything that worked. Yeah, and they were that. lucky. Good luck. Uh, are you on anything, Steak Marlins related? I am not. No. Greg, I mean, do you have I, any thoughts I on the Marlins? Tell this. I'm yeah, on there under now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under now. So, uh, Pete, I'm just looking at their uh, their player props uh, for the season. There's two names that do stand out to me. Uh, Josh Bell, who they got from the Nationals. Yeah, he uh, was, yeah he's not very good. It. Well, I, I, I was wondering, in a weird way, I mean, if this is a guy, if, if this team's not really going to give a fuck, I was trying to attack somebody like, who do you think might not give a fuck? Um, I, Luis Arise is a guy, and, and Jazz Chisholm are guys I can't uh, bet against. But I didn't know, they, Jake Berger, was he on the White Sox? Yeah, they got him over the trade deadline, um, Jake Berger and Josh Bell. And it's so funny, Jake Berger and Josh Bell played incredible when they were on the Marlins. But again, those are both guys where you look at the underlying metrics and you're like, well, you're both due for regression. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, if the only good things that they added are now due for regression, like good luck. But um, no, I wouldn't target any Marlins. Props. Just take the team. Okay. Take the Just team take the because team I also, there's also another element. There's a good chance... They trade some of these best players. Mm, they start over if they start point. slow, right? Good so point. if Lu- you take Luzardo because it's like, ah, uh, but then they trade him mid-season to a contender and he goes <laughs> off, like, you know, or any of the best players, they might just be gone and on better teams and play better. So, like, just fade the team. Don't worry about the players. It's a team aspect. They're going to stink. Well, uh, yeah. that that Vikings comparison might have just also pushed me over the edge, so I might have to get down with you on. I mean, DJ, if you think about the rest of the division too, the Braves are the Braves, the Phillies are the Phillies, so those are two really good teams. We That's all like the Mets, Mets so that's yeah. a vote. The Nationals could be the Nationals could be sneaky, not terrible. They'll be bad, but like that won't matter. <laughs> they'll be bad, but not... they they'll be better than last year. I They're like bad. the Nationals lineup. I saw them. At play at City Field, I liked what I saw from the Nationals. You guys might know this. I want to make something clear. You guys might know this. Maybe somebody in your listeners, like if I could help anybody, new schedule change. So you're not playing your division as much well, as in right. any year. So like the division thing is not quite as important. You're still mm. going to play your division, obviously. But this is the year where it's like if, for example, Corbin Burns, right, going to the AL East. People mm-hmm. are like, oh, he's going to struggle, right? He's playing in these smaller ballparks and gets way better lineups. Yes, but he's not facing them as much. Okay. As he, it's, as it's, a, it went from like 19 games to 13, right? 19 yeah, exactly. to 13, is that what it is? So okay. like, it's not quite as much. So do, that doesn't need to be in your handicap as much as it might normally be. I'm glad they did that yeah. because I felt like there was a month and a half where all I saw was the fucking Tigers playing the Twins, and I'm like, Every enough day. already. I 100% uh, agree. 
Okay. So Pete, on that, uh, on that note, let's, uh, can you uh, briefly, before you tell us about your high highs, can you just briefly tell us, we like the Mets this year. Um, we like Pete Alonzo big time this year. Uh, I think you commented on that tweet. I put about Pete Alonzo like a month ago with RBIs. That's what it was. Either you or Javon, I, I, I ended up going with that stakes on him for most home runs. Greg, you're on him for something. Um, I'm going to get on the RBIs train. Okay. We're, I think we're going to take the Mets over wins, and uh, I know there's there's risks with that. But, again, I don't want to be super redundant. So just real quickly, you said you're higher on the Mets. Do you like that bet, yes or no? Yeah, I don't mind it. I made their okay. win total a win higher than the than the line was. Um, so I lean towards the over as well. I'm just unsure what a bridge year means for them. Yep. Like, if they're doing well, are they adding? If they're doing poorly, no. are they subtracting? Are they staying yes. put? What are they doing? So, right. and I think we could say like, yes, we know what they're doing. But at the end of the day, like this is a new GM and Dave Stearns, who is a small market GM who works within the margins. There's a reason a hedge fund manager like Steve Cohen brings him in is to, right, cut the fat, right? What do we need to get rid of? How do we optimize this team financially and on the field? So I don't know what they're going to do with the deadline. From Fair looking enough. at the roster right now, I think they're a little bit better than what their win total suggests. I think people are down on their starting pitching when in reality, I think it's a bunch of just guys who are like, they're not going to lose you the game, but they're not going to win you the game either. So if the offense can show up, and that's why I target Pete Alonso RBIs, because I think there's yep. going to be more guys on base for him than in previous years. I think Nimmo is still going to get his. I think Lindor is going to get his. And if they move Francisco Alvarez up, I think there's going to be more opportunities. Pete Alonso doesn't deserve a 42 and a half home run line. He doesn't. He's gotten to this once, but why does he have it? Well, he's in a contract here, right? He's trying to get his money. So it makes sense that those lines would be inflated. Among home run hitters, uh, with my numbers, he's the most overvalued home run hitter that we have on the board. Mm. Like, uh, I'm seeing his line should be more 38 and a half, 39 and a half, but he's got to jump. RBIs, however, you can almost never make it too high because this guy is a run producer at his core. But the thing is, stake, I don't mind taking the upside, right? Yeah. Because if he does end up having this historic year, right, everything clicks for him this year. Pete Alonso is Pete Alonso. He's the polar bear. He can hit 50, right? So I don't, that's why I like that play taking the upside. And, but that's why I don't like when you said I'm taking Judge over 41 and a half home runs. Because it's like he's either going to hit 55 or he's going to get hurt and hit 30. So that's how I would attack these guys. Bregman is another guy who I think you guys should attack because his lines aren't overvalued like Pete Alonso's is. That's why I always notice for the Astros, nobody likes them. Everyone still thinks they're cheaters. Nobody gives them the credit they deserve when in reality they're in the midst of a dynasty. And this is also the year where they get Josh Hader in the back of their bullpen. I've been talking about baseball for a very long time. I have no, you're comments. doing great. I, I yeah. could listen no, to talk about it. It's great. Yeah, I like listening to people who know about baseball, talk about baseball. That's how I got involved with you guys on the Twitter spaces with Krabs and Javon and everything. So I love it. Um, let's uh, let's give Beave some twins talk because I, I don't know that I care too much to hear about the twins team, but I Beav, was looking. What is Beave saying? Beave said, said he would what? cut his dick off his body if you gave a pew hair pew pair of twins content. Um, right. I'm curious though. Pablo Lopez, Cy Young, ten to one, felt like a lot of respect when I was looking at the odds board and the uh, deserves it. Okay, so the AL market, you've got Corbin Burns four to one. You had Gosman seven plus seven fifty. Pa there was another guy. I'm, I'm going to pull it up in a, in a minute. I'm forgetting, but uh, and then Pablo was ten to one. Do you Scooble. think he's got a shot? Scooble. Yeah, of course. No, Scooble's ten to one. Scooble's ten to one. Yeah, I mean, I bet Scooble at sixteen to one. Um, that's oh, my nice. pick. But I also bet Cole Reagans. I also bet Grayson Rodriguez. I also bet Framber Valdez. The I have a I have a different approach. Um, with Garrett Cole going down, the AL song is wide open. Yeah, um, I agree. So time to take long shots, time to just kind of sprinkle on everyone you like. Hopefully you hit one big. That's what I did. Um, yeah, I mean, I have no problem with Pablo Lopez at all. I think he's disgusting. I have a bet on him on opening day, which I'll release tomorrow, um, which I think he's going to pitch really well. I think he's disgusting. The only worry about him is I feel like people forget with Miami, he was injury prone all the time. And then he has one great season. And now it's like, all right, now he's a 200 inning guy. We'll see. Talent perspective, though, beef. Like, I mean, the dude's a horse, an absolute horse. When he's coming in with 97 with those sweepers and those changeups, he is disgusting. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, how could you not be high on a guy like Pablo? Pablo Lopez moved from ten to one to nine to one on Bet Online in front of my eyes. Somebody in here is moving the market. Wow. Love to see that. The other guy was Luis Castillo. Um, Pete, can we get your it's, thoughts on the Mariners? I'm sorry, go ahead, Greg. No, I was just say to touch on the Twins real quick because Beef was talking to him. I took him to win that division. Me too. I, I think everybody else there is a little bit trendy, and and it, to me, there there seem to be it's another one where there's a big discrepancy between the Twins and everyone else. And I feel like everyone's getting a little cute, like, oh, this could be the Tigers. Oh, the Guardians. What scares the fuck out of me out of the Guardians is uh, Frank Cohn is gone. So you can talk all you want about players, but that's a pretty big structural change with him gone. Um, and that's why I like the Twins. I think they were like one, I want to say plus 130. Does that sound right? So what I, will say, win the division. what I will say is I hammered the Guardians over wins and I bet them to win the division. Wow, uh, you're big on the Guardians this year, and that's without that scares uh, Cal Quantrell. Yeah, it's without Cal. Um, <laughs> so we had Stephen Kwan and Tanner Bybee on our podcast. Uh, about I always thought it was Bibby. Ago. Tanner Bybee. It's um, Bybee. Bybee, yeah. And um, after speaking with them, and just I bet it before I even talked to him, Pete's come back and firm. Uh, this is the team that I don't think is getting the love. Like, I think everyone's kind of grouping in the Guardians with the. Uh, Tigers and the Royals, which makes no sense to me because I've not seen another Guardians ticket. Um, uh, I listening, no one's on the Guardians, and this team had twelve walk off losses last year. That is not normal for a team at all. Why? Because Emmanuel Class A and this bullpen had to get a lot of work done last year. Why? Because Shane Bieber went down. Tristan McKenzie went down their two best pitchers. So it was 349 innings from three rookies. It's one of the highest in the last decade. So now they get back Bieber, who's throwing 94. Remember, he was always a guy throwing 90 last year. And you're like, what happened? He went, got his arm back healthy. Tristan McKenzie's back. Those are two of the best pitchers in the American League. Mm, I do. And like you McKenzie. have a great bullpen. And you have a lot of guys offensively who are due for bounce backs. Andres Jimenez is a guy who was – sixth in MVP voting in 22, then he has a down year. I think he's going to bounce back. Stephen Kwan, same thing. I think Josh Naylor is due for a little bit of, you know, a breakout year. Jose Ramirez is still Jose Ramirez. There is no better rotation in the Central than the Guardians have. I would put the Guardians' bullpen up against anybody. The Twins have the best bullpen, but the Guardians are right there. Mm. And the offense, they're going to be one of the best defensive teams on top of it. And Steven Vogt, their new manager, is lauded as, you know, just like the perfect guy to enter a young clubhouse because there was a disconnect between some of the young players in Francona, right? It's just a young team with an older manager. And we forget that two years ago, the Guardians were the youngest team in Major League Baseball. They had this amazing year. Then they had all had their sophomore slump. We see that in baseball all the time, right? Second year takes a little bit to adjust. Now their third year. They're all starting to get into it. They're a very close-knit team. They all played with each other in the minor leagues. And the Twins, they have more upside, but they also have more downside because Carlos Correa is the only hitter in their entire lineup from last year who had over 500 ABs. Only one. Pablo Lopez, injury concerns. Their whole team has injury concerns. All the most talented. If they all stay healthy, they will win the division. But there's a lot of injury concerns here. Buxton, even guys like Kirloff, right? Edward Julian hasn't fully had a full season yet. There's a lot of guys on the team. Royce Lewis has played 70 major league games. Like, we all think these guys are great, but it's like, all right, play 162. Well, the Guardians have no troubles there. So I think this is the team. Everyone's buying the Tigers. Everyone's buying the Royals. The Guardians are better than both of those teams, in my opinion. But they're not ranked like that because they won 76 games last year. They fell to rock bottom when all of unlucky stuff was not on their side, when it was in 22, I think this team wins the division. And I think they go over 78 wins. Wow. You just shat on Greg's chest and I absolutely love it. No, in all, in all seriousness though, Greg, I, I lean, I agreed with you. Um, Steak, I don't know where you side with the, with the guardians. No, I saw I you did the, the twins, the favorite, like the twins are the most right. talented team. It's just, they have, they worry me. They're in. They, Royce, they get Lewis all the is, time. Royce Lewis is the same odds as Bo Bichette to win the AL MVP. Is that weird? No, because Royce Lewis is so insane. fucking talented. He's insane. He's I guess no, I don't know enough about Royce Lewis. Oh, he's, I mean, beef. Like, I'm not going to beef. This guy is so good. The Twins he's, have the best roster, right. but they have the most injury concerns. When the Guardians have, like, like, if the Twins are a 10 out of 10 roster, the Guardians are like an 8 out of 10. 
on the come up while the twins like just got theirs. I, and the twins also lost Sonny Gray, finished second in American League signing voting last year. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yohan Duran is hurt to start the year. Best closer. Nobody cares. Like already things are happening. The season hasn't even started yet. Like I might have to take a Royce Lewis MVP ticket. Stake, are you going to bet on the Guardians or the Twins at all? So I like the Twins. Um, I don't dislike the Guardians by any means. I have no plans on fading them at 78 and a half wins, but I do think they get, they finish second in the division. Um, I realize a lot of my takes are like kind of counting on uh, injuries not to happen because you, you said it, Royce Lewis injury prone, Aaron Judge injury prone, all these, guys, all these teams I'm high on. I need it to work out. But bro, if it works out for Royce Lewis, I do think he could win the MVP. That's how good I think he is. And you said it. You're, it's, there's no disagreement. You, you think they're the most talented team in the division. I do too. I don't hate the guards look. I don't think anyone else in the division really has a shot. Uh, so it's guards or twins in my opinion. And I really do like the twins this year. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna make Royce Lewis uh, uh, MVP a bet. Uh, Greg, well, you kind of gave your thoughts, Greg. If you, I didn't know if you had anything to add, and then I wanted to hear. No, I, I actually checked. I did just take their win, the Twins win total over, which makes you feel a little bit better because I'm not okay. directly lining up against Pete, but they're 86 no, I mean, and a half. If the Twins go over their win total, they're probably going to win the division. So, all right, Pete. So that's why I would just take – that's why, I, like, go for upside, especially with these teams. Like, if you feel that they have, like, a boomer bust to them, take the upside. Don't just bet the regular lines. That's what, like, I'm just trying to soak the most value out of what I know. Sure. And what sure. I know about the Twins is, like, if you're going to take them, take them upside. Take them World Series, Greg. Like, think about it. If they yeah, make the World yeah, Series. I'm not going to go that No, I mean, I mean, like, think about it. They made the playoffs last year. Though Those odds are going to cut in, into a quarter <laughs> if they make the playoffs because they have the starting pitching. And if they made the playoffs, that means everyone stayed healthy. And then they're going to be really dangerous. So, like, that's why, like, Bet them long shots. Like bet them. To oh, actually, crazy. their division's not a long shot at all. They're minus one fifteen to win. The exactly. Division. Like, wh where's the value so, in that? I'm betting a right. minus yeah. price on a team that gets injured. Like, they might, they should be favored, but that, like, that's why when I bet Guardians plus four hundred, I was like, that's stupid. That should be plus two hundred. Um, Pete, what team are you highest on? By the way, guys, it's noon. If you, I'm going to go for another thirty minutes till BTL starts, uh, State Greg, if you guys have to dip, feel free. Pete, I appreciate your time. I'd love to hear. One more uh, team that you're highest on this year. Team that I'm highest on? Are, is it the Rays? If it's the Rays, it can be the Rays. Yeah, I mean, I bet the Rays over wins. I bet them to make the playoffs. I bet them to win the division. So I guess it would be the Rays. But That's like, crazy. I'll just tell you the rest of my bets quickly. I'm on the A's over. Love that over. Interesting. That's 50. Think about this for a second. Okay. Lowest win total in MLB history. Um, after, so what happened last year, they were at 59 wins and it was the most popular under on the books. Everybody on earth faded the A's and it cashed, right? They won 50 games. So what do the books do? Well, they're like, well, oh, people are going to hammer the A's under again. It was the easiest bet in the world. They lowered it to 57. I was like, what the hell are they smoking? This team is way better than they were last year. Why would you lower it? Right. If you thought that the old A's were 59 and a half and you got burned, that doesn't mean you lower it. You can keep it the same, at least. And then every projection system, no, every one you're going to find has the A's over 60 wins. Because their team is way better. They improve their starting pitching. They signed J.D. Davis, who nobody cares about, but can still rake. Zach Gell off full year. So I'm on the A's over. I am on the Astros over. Love them. Bet them World Series. Bet them over wins. Um, Rays, Guardians. I bet D-backs over 83 and a half. A while ago, good to see them get Jordan Montgomery. Um, Stake, I was hearing you at the beginning. You were like, uh, World Series hangover. Couldn't agree more. Everyone just already tossed them to the side. Nobody cares mm -hmm. about it. It's like, I think they yeah. could go on a mini Royals run. Um, and I think Corbin Carroll is unfucking believable. Yeah, I bet him MVP. Okay, I was going to say, like, he could be that guy, like, right on the scene. Bam, he just wins the MVP. Yeah, and my favorite player prop, CJ Abrams, over 37 and a half stolen bases. Crushed that line. CJ Abrams. Yeah, you want to pitch? I mean, I can stay for a little bit longer. It's up to you guys. You can. Yeah. Uh, no. What is he? Um. What team is CJ Abrams on? Wait, is he the guy? Nationals. 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 Is Get he the there. guy that's a fucking tank? No. Oh. That's James. No, no. no. So he's Stone. Stone Garrett. Yeah, Stone Garrett. But I, I think I don't even know if he's on the Nationals still. Oh, well, that's too bad because he's a bad looking. Remember, player. he he went down with that. Uh, I think it was an ACL thing. Um, I don't know where he is right now, but yeah, he's a tank. So actually, I I, I want to hear just so everybody knows what's coming up. I, I think we're all high on the Mariners, and I have Julio Rodriguez MVP. So I want to hear your Abrams pitch, but then I would love to hear your thoughts on the Mariners if that's cool. Yeah, I can okay. I can stay until twelve thirty. So if, okay, whatever you want. Um, right. Beautiful, Pete. I I'd like I get two teams for you too, but go ahead on the Mariners. Yep, shoot. So 
Yeah. So, I, sorry. Should I talk Abrams first or Mariners? Give us Abrams. an Abrams pitch, but it doesn't have to be like 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Abrams pitch. So not a long pitch. So Abrams <laughs> stole 40. Abrams stole 47 bases last year. His line's at 37. <laughs> and normally stolen baselines are always going to be lower because there's health involved, right? Especially for a shortstop. However, CJ Abrams on July 7th of last year, the Nationals made a change in their lineup. They put CJ Abrams in the leadoff spot. From that moment on, he stole 33 bases that led Major League Baseball over Acuna, over Carroll, over everybody. And the thing is, he was only caught twice. He stole 47 bags last year and was only caught four times. He is, by far, in the second half, the most efficient base dealer in the entire sport. Now, when you consider the Nationals, they are a team who is going to find who their young core is, and C.J. Abrams is absolutely their young core. So with the new rules making it easier to steal with a guy that efficient, he is going to have the green light amongst everybody in Major League Baseball. Like, for example, Bobby Wood Jr. stole 49 bags last year in 64 chances, 76% hit rate, which is right above where you want to be. Like, okay, he can keep stealing. 75 is the number. Abrams was 47 of 51. I think he leads the league in steals. I bet him plus 1,200, and I I bet him over 37 and a half. I think he steals 70. I don't even think this number is going to be close. All right. I think he oh. can steal 37 in the first half. Jesus That's Christ. how much I love him. <laughs> Brink's truck. Um, okay. Well, that's a pretty good pitch. Not going to lie to you. I don't know that I've ever heard a uh, stolen base pitch in my life. Um, okay. Talk to me about the Seattle Mariners. So I, I felt like the Mariners were – Pretty trendy team last year. I think they ended up getting there with their over win total. I was talking about uh, this with Hayes, and I think they got there in the last game of the season. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if Staker Greg got involved with them late in the season, but they were looking like a team that they had the pieces. People were on them. Uh, and then I think maybe some people got cute with the World Series ticket. Obviously didn't get there. But this is a team where, square or not, I'm into them. I like that they got uh, Luke Rayleigh, which I just found out yesterday. I didn't realize. I knew Nuke was gone, but I didn't know he went to the Mariners. So I obviously love that. But Julio Rodriguez is a guy where I could I could chalk it up with. Uh, and to full disclosure, part of the reason I made this bet to win MVP, um, and I clearly moved the market because he went from 15-1 to 1 to 7-1, to 1, was because he was seen with Paolo Boncaro doing a jersey swap. So that is good enough for me because um, we've seen what Boncaro and the Orlando Magic are doing. So I think that rubs off on uh, on Seattle. But – we like the Mariners over wins. Um, I don't know what they are to make the playoffs. Probably a, a, a minus price. I would think maybe a semi-steep number. But um, do you think this is a team that is – I mean, I like their rotation. Castillo, I've watched him. He's a fucking dog. The Hazen loves Kirby. Took him to win Cy Young. He's 11-1. And I've seen Gilbert. Uh, a lot of smart people like Gilbert. So are we, uh, are we collectively on the Mariners this year? I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news. No, I want you to be. I want you yeah, to be. Yeah, I mean, I – I'm the only one on earth low on the Mariners. Wow. Um, I, I bet, um, I you know, they were my darling last year. I bet them over wins. I bet them World Series. Um, I didn't know that, by the way. Yeah, so uh, thankfully I hit my over wins. So it's right. like that bet, you know, the World Series was just a sprinkle. But I'm looking at a Mariners team, and I watched a lot of Mariners games last year. And I don't think they did enough to the offense to really make me excited. Because that was the problem last year. They had great pitchers and all of them stayed healthy. This is a team also that doesn't have the same bullpen that we're normally used to. That this bullpen has five or six guys where you can go to and say, yep, game's over. They've been trading all of them, right? They've traded Paul Seawald to the Diamondbacks. And now they have Andres Munoz, Gregory Santos, um, like Justin Topa they got rid of. It's not the same bullpen. So the bullpen is weaker than in normal years. The starting pitching, <clears throat> excuse me, the starting pitching is so deep, right? You got Castillo, you got Gilbert, you got Kirby, you got Bryce Miller, you got Brian Wu. Well, Brian Wu was already injured. Oh. Bryce Miller is a guy that here at Just Baseball we're not super high on. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> excuse me. Bryce Miller is a guy that we're just not super high on. We think he's good but like he's a five starter Kirby Gilbert and Castillo have to be healthy all year and amazing for this team to reach the precipice I really like those pitchers but if that's what I'm hanging my hat on but to your point I bet Julio Rodriguez MVP I think everyone should bet Julio Rodriguez MVP until he wins one because he's going to it's just huh. a matter of if not when kind of like or, that I mean, it's a matter of when not if yeah um 
But I just have, right, they lost Eugenio Suarez, who was like a big part of their locker room, also played well for them. He's gone now. J.P. Crawford had a great year. Does he regress a little bit, right? That year kind of came out of nowhere. Maybe he continues. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's things to like, but there's also things to not like. They lost Jose Caballero, who I think is a good second baseman, who's going to be good for your raise to Jen. That's right. Like, they added Jorge Polanco, who I like, but a guy who was a former twin who gets injured all the time. Ty France, Mariners fans are expecting him to bounce back. It's like, okay, let's see it. Right? Cal Raleigh, right? They traded away Jared Kelnick, who mm -hmm. I thought had more upside, but they're going with Dominic Canzone, who I like. But it's like, there's guys in the lineup where it's like, you're going to be getting this six, seven, eight, nine. It's like, all right, where are the hits coming from? And that's the mm -hmm. same thing with the Mariners last year. And if the pitching already did what they were supposed to do last year, and now it's a little bit worse and starting to get injured. Like, are yeah. we given up on Texas? Are we given up on Houston? There's also teams in the East. They're going to all be pretty good. Are we sure the Mariners are better than all of them? Are we sure the Mariners are better than the Yankees? Are we sure the Mariners are better than the Rays, than the mm. Blue Jays, than the Orioles, than the Rangers, than the Astros? Whoever yeah. went to Central, there's not that many spots. So I think they're one injury in the rotation away from like being an 83 to 85 win team. So I didn't invest in them this year. I didn't bet their unders. I just okay. like, I don't see the vision that everybody else is like. I saw it last year. And they all performed as if they should, and they went one win over. Yeah. And their That's offense is scary. Worse. Their offense is the same, and their bullpen's worse. And it's still the same pitchers with one of them already injured. I'm not on them. I don't I don't love them as much as people do. But the same thing is, though, on my show, Aram, who's equally as smart, sometimes more, it's his favorite over on win total. So, like, I'm the only one. Even the smart guys I know who are on my podcast all love them over. So, like, I'm on an island by myself here. So, maybe I'm just wrong. I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll send the stream link to Arum. Um, Steak, we've got, uh, like, 20 minutes left. Do you have any teams? I'm going to get to Greg because I heard Greg said he had one or two. Do you have any teams that you wanted to uh, present to Pete? No, Pete made me realize I'm on a lot of boomer bust teams, and I'm uh, banking on some injuries. I The Mariners was actually uh, the team I wanted to hear him talk about, even though it didn't uh, go the way I wanted it to. I still respect it. I like the Mariners, um, but I did like them last year too. Um, the pitching's just so good. And uh, all the other teams I'm backing, like the Yankees and the Mets, I'm backing because of lineups, whereas this team I was backing because of the pitching. Uh, I saw someone say the division's too crowded. That's obviously a very good point, but I don't know, man. I, I, I have a feeling uh, about the Mariners. Um, I'm not going insane, but maybe do you think this is one where I just go with the upside and take them to win the World Series and take Julio Rodriguez to win MVP instead of trying to go over wins or, you know, is that one of those ones? It's tough because they might they might hit your over wins and still not hit the play, still not make the playoffs. Mm, that's a good. Point. They're a tough one. Mm -hmm. I don't see that same upside. Like, what's the upside of the Mariners offensively? Julio's going to get his. Yeah. Well. To be fair, the only other person I was going to back, well, actually, I already placed the bet, is Castillo to win the Cy Young, and that even that's a pretty cheap price. I think yeah, I got that, that, yeah. my co-host Jack bet that, or he doesn't bet, but that was his pick. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, like, I'm on an island alone, so I wouldn't be like that afraid of the Mariners. Like, what I say is not like the gospel. Like, I will, oh, of course, of course, I will yeah, be wrong. It. You know, we so if it. you like the Mariners, like I could see it. I just, I didn't, I don't have anything invested in them. But also to be clear, it's not like I'm fading them. Yeah. I just. Right. I just worried, I guess. Cool. Fair enough. Greg. Cool. Real quick, I'm going to dip out after that one. I, I appreciate you, Pete. Absolutely sake. Okay, I'm awesome sake. Right. We'll talk to you later, man. Thank you. Okay. Take it easy, guys. Greg, uh, what are the teams that you wanted to present to Pete? I heard you say you had one or two. Well, and, and maybe I missed this if you guys talked about it, but I really like the San Francisco Giants. Um, I think I'm going to take their win the total. I think I'm going to take them to make the, the playoffs. They, they seem like a team who – added the right pieces, but they're still not getting a ton of emotion about them. But I, I just feel like the Giants are, are a team I typically like to back. Um, and so that that's what I'm looking at, plus 160 to make the playoffs. And then I think their win totals, I want to say it's 81 and a half. Um, yeah, it's funny. The Giants are the one team that I also like and my co-hosts don't. Uh, which is interesting. They're more Padres guys. I'm more Giants and D-backs. I, th I actually think the D-backs are the ones that finish second. I don't think the Giants make the playoffs due to that, but I think the Giants outperform the Padres. I don't know if there's a line where you can bet like Giants finish over Padres or 
Giants more than Padres wins. I'd be interested mm-hmm. in a market like that. Um, but I think the line is like pretty spot on. Like the Giants are like I like the Giants, but I'm also pretty afraid of their back end of their rotation. I'm pretty afraid of some guys in their bullpen. I think they have some good players. Their offense, like I like the additions, but it wasn't like a superstar. It was like Solaire and Chapman and Jung Hu Lee. And I think Lee is going to struggle initially. I think he's going to start to hit more. But I just think that this team is going to be around that 82 to 83. So I like the over on wins. I don't think I would take them playoffs. I just, I mean, it's not. If I'm thinking about the teams who I think are going to make it, Dodgers, whoever wins the Central, I think it's the Brewers, by the way. I bet plus 800. Um, Really? Yeah. Central seems pretty wide open. Let's put a put in that, though. Yeah, yeah. I want to, maybe we'll end with that. So if you think about it, so (laughs) the division winners win, and then there's three wild cards. So whoever wins the East, assuming the Braves, whoever wins the Central, I like the Brewers, but. You know, that could be wrong. I'm plus 800. Whoever wins the Central um, and the Dodgers. So there's three teams less. The Diamondbacks and the Phillies, I think, are the two teams who are going to make it. Then are the Giants that third, which I don't hate. That's why it's a pretty good number at plus 160. And then I'm even talking myself into it because I'm a giant. I I like the Giants too. A playoff series with Webb and Snell. You might be favorites against a lot of teams in that. Snell, we remember, Jajen, you remember how good he was in the playoffs with the Rays? He was like a big reason why they were even there. Yeah, can we not talk about that? You have Webb, who's like, no matter how good you are at hitting, like you're going to hit it into the ground and you're going to ground out and you're going to like it. Like that's who Webb is. So, and then they have Duvall at the back end. Like they're a team I don't mind if you want to start investing real long shots, like World Series or something. Mm. Like that. If they make the playoff, I, I love how at first you were apprehensive about playoff and just talked yourself into World Series. I just kind of <laughs> did. I, I just kind of did because the Giants have made new moves. So it's like I haven't really – I like it. I do. No I like snow playoff talks. Yeah. About the, I mean, like think about it. Let's say they face – let's say they face the Phillies in round one. Logan Webb versus Wheeler. You might go Wheeler, but Logan Webb's as good as anybody. I'd go Wheeler, but – Logan Webb's great. Snell, Nola, you probably go Snell. Then what? Jordan Hicks. Like, get- if they made the playoffs, that means Jordan Hicks probably had a decent year or Kyle Harrison against Ranger. They can keep winning. And who knows? The Dimebacks beat the Dodgers last year. Anything could happen. So, yeah, yeah, yeah you're not a, the Dodgers both they're not a bad year, team so. to bet playoffs in World Series. I'm not going to, but I'm going to take them playoffs. Not World yeah. Series, but I'll take them playoffs. But like, it's it's not bad to just get like a little some lunch money on them because if they make the, the playoffs, the line is going to fall to literally nothing so it's like if you think they make the playoffs then you should be betting them world series is what i'm saying i like that i have two two questions to bring up real quick on the topic of the giants i haven't given them a ton of thought but obviously i love that they i love they got snell because i'm a snell guy um but i think between matt chapman and jorge soler coming over new acquisitions i say one thrives and one maybe underperforms so, Pete, I ask you, if you had to pick one, who would it be? You more confident in Chapman or Solaire? We're talking about lines? Like, what are we talking about? Just overall performance. And if you were to pick one, how would you bet them? I mean, I'd probably just, go. Yeah, it's so tough because it's like, well, if we're talking about value, Matt Chapman's going to be more valuable because Jorge Soler is a DH, right? Jorge Soler, the only way he can stay healthy is playing DH because in the outfield he has a back issue. It's hard for but okay, here let me let me simplify. Do you like Chapman? Would you bet on Chapman over hits, or would you bet yeah. on Solaire over home runs? I wouldn't bet either of them. Over you don't either. like either. Okay, no, Fair. I mean it's not like I don't like either. It's just like Solaire's coming off thirty six home runs. Like I'm not going to bet on a guy to go over after he had one of his best years in recent memory. Matt Chapman has just got signed like in a huge ballpark. Like I mean I like even their current numbers him playing with the Blue Jays and stuff. Like he's going to oh, Oracle. It's the hard. biggest ballpark in major league baseball. Mm-hmm. So like, I wouldn't want to take his overs either. It's almost like mm-hmm. fade him, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to like him. It just means their projection might be a little bit high. Like, I, no, nah, I wouldn't bet either of them. Okay. Bet, Fair bet Michael Harris over hits. I love, that. I heard your Michael Harris bitch. I don't really want to talk about the Braves. They're just, they're just, they're, they're in a fucking enigma. Uh, Greg, who was the other team that you wanted to talk it, about? It was actually the Braves. So go. Oh yourself. God. All right. I mean, <laughs> well, I heard Pete. I'll keep it. I'll keep it very brief. Of if I was going to bet a team to bet to win the World Series right now, it would probably be them. Am I getting duped? 
No. Do you? I love the Braves this year. Um, obviously, yeah. um, they needed an edge. What would you say was missing from the Braves? Because it ain't talent, right? But when they get keep getting kicked in the teeth by the Phillies, it's because they just are grittier. They just it grit. almost, yeah, it's like, like grit. They want yeah. it more. Like it's hard to quantify, but it's like, how do you explain the Phillies doing that to the Braves when they're less talented? How do you explain it? I think it's strider i mean i was in the bank for that game where strider gave up a couple of home runs like strider is better than ranger but the phillies won right like yeah good point who did they add this offseason the guy who cuts up jerseys and slams gatorade coolers and is just a mean motherfucker chris sale i love the addition mm. more than what he's going to provide on the field that's a guy who when acuna misses a fly ball and doesn't hustle, he's going to pin him up against wall and be like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, they need that guy. And they got him. They're yeah, scary. So, They're I thought you were going to say Jock Peterson. People are asking, like, should I take over one on one and a half? Like, I'm like, where's the weakness here? They, they needed their one thing, and they added Jared Kelnick. He's been horrible in spring training. Nobody believes him anymore. The Braves unlock him. It's over. It's over. It, he was traded for Edwin Diaz. Like, he was a top prospect who just hasn't made it in Seattle. If he goes to Atlanta and hits. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that doesn't sound very fun. But I love Michael Harris over hits, and he's their nine hitter. And I think he can lead the league in hits. I bet him plus 5,000. Do you think – I don't know why I, I can't get over this guy. Um I almost took, or maybe I did take Dylan Cease to win the Cy Young. No, Phil's Phil's Utley, who's in here, and he's going to come on next week or, or tomorrow. Uh, I love talked, Phil, but come on. yeah, no, no, no. He he did a great job. He 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 talked me off of Cease Cy Young last year, and it didn't hit, obviously. Uh, but he's on the Padres, so you said you're higher on the Giants and the Padres, but some of your coworkers are higher on the Padres, yeah, than the Giants. I like uh, the fact that Soto's gone. Uh, maybe some weight off their shoulders, and they still got dudes. Uh, they've signed a couple of pitchers. I thought about, I was talking to Javon about this, about maybe uh, buying in on the Padres to do something in, in season, make the playoffs, alternate over win total. You don't like the Padres at all. And I'm just curious if they're like a quick elevator pitch of why you're, you're down on them. Yeah. I'll just give the pitch and wind down on them. It's not from a talent perspective. It's from a, what was the problem with the Padres last year? Do you guys hear those rumors where it's like, oh, the clubhouse isn't great. They're not really getting along. They're fighting all the time. It's just a bad clubhouse dynamic. Do you guys ever hear that? Didn't hear it, but and it's a little it's bit. Not there's shocking. like too many egos I, in the person. I mean, you do, you guys you guys watch the Padres. You probably bet on their money line. Did you see their like their body language when they were down? It was like the game was over. Yes. And then when they were, they were up, it was like, well, the game ain't over, right? We just saw it happen with the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. Like they were winning two to one. The ball goes through Cronenworth's glove. Mm -hmm. Like these things just happen to the Padres and it's been happening for kind of like their entire existence as a franchise might just be the chargers. They just have Peter losers doesn't like the DNA. Padres because they took King. No, I mean, that's like, do, do I come off as a biased Yankee fan? I'm just not at all like at all, but whatever. No, um, not really. You don't. Yeah. The Padres like, I think there's still something there. Like, yeah, they got rid of Soto. And, like, I don't think Soto was the problem in the locker room. I think it's a – I think somebody Machado, said in the chat, Machado. Machado. Yeah, I think, I think that's still there. And it's like, I'm not going to invest in someone where it's like the core of your locker room, is it fixed? Like, Yeah, I definitely don't think just Soto been happening to them, it's because their body language sucks. It looks like they don't even care. Like, I, I hope it's reversed. And people are like, oh, that doesn't really matter. Matters to me. You could think that doesn't matter. That's fine. Matters to me. I invest in that type of stuff. The stuff that's hard to quantify. The stuff that takes a ton of research to even find. Like, that matters to me. Baseball is a 162. You need to be a group of brothers to make it throughout an entire season. If they're fighting all the time, yeah, they're talented. Uh, last one. I just got a call. I got a Cy Young Award winner, and they lost Juan Soto. And now we're buying... I got to be somewhere at 115, unfortunately. So I'm going to uh, uh, ask you yeah. one more question. Greg, are you good, by the way? Any pressing questions for Pete? No, I, I thought we were going to talk NL Central, but ask what you want to ask. Uh, okay. Well, I was going to ask about the Brewers. No, perfect. Wh why? I don't really care for the Brewers. And maybe, though, now that they've gotten rid of Burns, I don't know. I just, I, they're like a team, not like the Padres, essentially, where it's like body language, but 
I just don't really ever. I think the Brewers had a fluky ass year last year. Um, and maybe, maybe I, I it's because I'm salty because I faded them. But like, I want to believe the Brewers could actually be a legitimate contender at times and make a deep run. Uh, Greg hates Willie Adames. I liked him as that like glue guy in the locker room, even though he was absolutely terrible in the Rays World Series run. But I will not bet on the Brewers to do anything uh, like win a division or win a playoff series or anything like that. I just can't do it because they're a little, they're like the Midwest version of the Padres, in my opinion, but not as dysfunctional and without the superstars. So maybe, maybe what I'm saying makes zero sense, but they're just, they, I, they're, I don't want to invest in them, but you like them to win the division. I feel like that's a pretty bold take and I like bold takes. So I just want to hear your reason why, before we wrap it up. First of all, do we, are we really sure who's going to win the central? Is that your, is that your biggest reason though? Cause it's I'm wide open, which is fine. I'm sorry about it. It's a wide open division. That's a, that's a good way to, that's a good lead in. Cause he's hundred percent right. It's fair enough. Fair enough. Are, we, are enough. we confident about the Cubs? Are we confident about the no. Reds? Are we confident? No, we're not right. No. Okay. So that's initially where my thoughts were. Fair. So I was looking for a long shot to begin with. Then I look at the Brewers and I, they won 92 games last year. Like you could say whatever they want to do in the playoffs, right? They didn't make, I'm not betting a world series. They were not good in the playoffs. It's fine. They lose Corbin Burns, and their win total drops two wins. It's too much, in my opinion. So I'm looking at this division. I'm saying, well, the Brewers have the best bullpen, bar none, even losing Devin Williams. So they got one of the best units in the division, right? There's three units. They're also the best defensive team in the division, them and the Cardinals. That's two of four. Number three, pitching. That's where they go a little bit awry. However, remember when they traded Corbin Burns? They didn't trade him for nothing. DL Hall, we really mm. like. Joey Ortiz, we really like. They have a lot of really young talent. Jackson Chorio, number four overall prospect on our top 100. He's going to start in center field. They have guys like Garrett Mitchell. They have guys like Bryce Terang. And they signed Reese Hoskins two years ago. Mm. Reese Hoskins at 30. Then he tore his ACL and he was thrown to the wayside. The Brewers got him. You know who you should start comparing the Brewers to, Jen? Not the Padres. They're the Midwest Rays. Oh, God. They're that team that soak the most out of the guys you've never heard of. William Contreras, they get from the Braves. He was playing DH and left. They turn him into one of the best defensive catchers in Major League Baseball and therefore made him a top five catcher in the game. They are a team that soaks the most out of. Nobody cares about them. But however, the reason I bet them division not over wins there's a scenario here where they struggle and then they just sell off everybody. And then it's a lost season. That's why I bet division. I didn't bet wins because they're either going to win 85 and win the division or they're going to sell and win 71 and finish fourth or maybe even fifth behind the Pirates. So I'm seeing, and I think Freddie Peralta could win the Cy Young for them. He's a guy a lot of people are super high on. I like D.L. Hall. I like Colin Ray, kind of. Like I, Jacob Junis is a fine piece. And they're, they have guys in the pipeline who I think they could bring up as well. So, like, they're one of those teams with a lot of upside with all these young guys. And if they all click in a division without a clear favorite and I'm getting plus 800, that line isn't available anymore for a reason. I, I, I think you should bet the Brewers on their upside. Don't bet wins. You don't have to take any props. But in a wide-open division after the team that just won it last year, I think it, there's a lot of value on them to win the division. Okay. Well said. Um, Pete, can't thank you enough, man. I appreciate your time coming on, giving your plays, uh, giving your thoughts on our plays. Just Baseball uh, podcast. Are you going to do the stream? So I'm going kind of back to my roots. Okay. 2022, I had the best year of my life. What was I doing? I was doing TikTok lives every morning, and then we were doing the spaces together. It was a collaborative effort. Love I want to get back to that. Love it. Um, because it's like the competition was fun, but like I don't really want to be competing with everybody. Like it's us against the books. Let's all make the best bets possible and beat them. Like that's kind of what I want to get back to. I miss those spaces. I thought they were so much fun. And the TikTok lives, it's just something that everybody can come in and it's easy and I'll go over the game. So I'll do my part and then we collab instead of compete. I think it's a better model. I think it's going to be more fun and I think it's going to lead to more units. That's the whole nice. point. More units in pockets. W dig. Uh, awesome, Pete. Thank you for your time. Good luck on your bets. Go raise. Most importantly, uh, thank you everybody for hanging out. It was a packed house in here. A lot of sub banks, kitsch, Sam, justice, Devin, get busy, dizzy, CJ, two K 
Love it. Pete, have a great day. Good luck on the season. We'll be tuning in and following as always. Uh, thank you for your time. Good luck, everybody. And yeah, make sure to follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. I'm very, very smart and funny on Twitter. And it's of. Apple, not, <laughs> not Appel. It's Apple. Yeah, like the I fruit. Kind of like Appel. I'm not going to lie, but I will I will start using Apple now. Quick quick story. I was in first grade. Um, I stand up to introduce myself to the class. And I said, my name is Peter Apple. And everybody started laughing and my face turned all red. And like my head, you might not be able to tell in the camera. It's enormous. I wear like a size seven and three fourths, eight hat. And everyone's like, he, he has a big red apple, like his head. I never liked it, but now I'm kind of into it. It's kind can of I give you some, Can I give you some W we'll advice? You, yeah. you, you should have just lied and said your last name was Appel. You kind of sound like you could have been an athlete. You, <laughs> I, been an you athlete. know what? Just like my bets, I stick on who I am. I'm Peter Apple. And these are my bets. You can take them or fade them. Um, uh, th this is Greg. This is Greg Banana. <laughs> All right, man. Take it easy. Thank you. I got to run. Appreciate it. Later, boys. Greg, thanks for hanging out. W uh, Dad Duty, watching a baby the entire time streaming. All right. Let me raid uh, BTL because they uh, – uh, Javon was kind enough to um, – uh, book it. Boy, I got to get the fuck out of here. Oh, boy. I got a disaster to get to. Yikes. Not a disaster, but I got an inspector at an apartment. He's there from 12 to 2, and the guy who was there has to leave, so someone has to be present, unfortunately, uh, and I got to go run right now. Uh, new squad pod tomorrow or else. W's not buster. Hold me accountable. I'm on it. You deserve it. You've given plenty to this uh, stream. We will absolutely do it. I'm going to raid BTL. Uh, have a great day. Good luck on your bets. Thank you guys for hanging out. Good luck. Peace. Raid.